Hey everybody and welcome to episode 9 of the Deadly Difficulty playthrough. This particular episode we go back to Sanctuary of Gloom. In the last episode we did kind of get served a piece of humble pie by this scenario. We came, I would say, not very close to winning. We were several rounds short at the end. It was quite noticeable that we were, you know, not within one turn of winning and maybe one mistake cost us it. It looked like, just generally speaking, we weren't fast enough. We didn't have the stamina. But I hate to leave a scenario unbeaten. And the reason why I'm playing on Deadly Difficulty is to challenge myself. So I don't like to leave scenarios unbeaten. But we go back into Sanctuary of Gloom. I'm not going to spoil this one at all. All I say is that it is a very, very exciting run. Uh, so I'm glad we did it again. But I'm not going to spoil as well or not we complete it this time. It is a mission that we don't necessarily need to complete. We also check out Abandoned Sewers afterwards. Another really, really hard scenario. So another episode of challenging scenarios that are really going to test us right to the limits. So I'm really excited for this one. So let's just crack straight into the deadly playthrough. Let's do a poll in chat. So... Would basically just be Sanctuary of Gloom or other, other, uh, other scenario. I don't want to list all of them, but I say we're we're quite close. Like I feel like we're we're nearly there. Um, so I'll let you guys vote on what you'd like to see. Because you know, I am conscious that I don't want to just do another like episode back to back on the Deadly series of just doing the same one again. Um, so what is it? It is What's the Snuggle Sanctuary of Gloom? I also like kind of know that we've got a good party for it. Or at least a better party than we will if we retire Mind Thief. Like once Mind Thief retires, we will definitely not be able to do this until we unlock I guess something like... I think we got the lightning bolt coming up. Until maybe we get bolt. I think we got bolt here, right? Yeah. So maybe when we get bolt, we can maybe go back. Because we'll be coming in at level 4 bolt. So you know how that goes. Oozing Grove? Not Oozing Grove either. We're not doing that. <laughs> There's no way. Maybe warm up with a layup. Lost Island. We could do. I mean, this is quite, this can be quite a difficult first room though, right? I think I've, I've lost this one once as well. I have actually lost Lost Island. More suffering. <laughs> a tie? Don't make it a tie. Oh, Jesus. I have to get the die involved. Okay, it's actually a tie. Okay, well, we're going to roll the die. Um... So odd will be Sanctuary of Gloom. Even will be something else. All right. Odd Sanctuary of Gloom. Even something else. That pretty clearly landed right on 11. That would be odd. The dice is spoken. Can't say any fairer than that. <laughs> it is what it is that's okay right let's let's just make let's do any prep though let's just make sure that we're prepped let's not just go into it kind of you know half half cocked i think we've got everything we need here we've got we've blessed already i think we must have okay yeah we're already blessed have we got items in every slot have we got items that we really want yes Good. Right, we'll speed run it this time. <clears throat> you didn't vote, go something else. Nice try. <laughs> nice try, Bob. What would a deadly money be without pain and suffering? That's true. Okay. Well, you guys can vote on this, but be nice. You guys can vote on this too, but be nice. Don't want to make this any harder than it already is. If, is this one that makes it harder? Um, okay. Walking a path between a small grove and a steep cliff, you suddenly find yourself facing a massive group of felled trees blocking the road. The placement of the trees seems odd, and you have a wary, suspicious feeling about the whole situation. Do we clear the trees from the road? 
it is best it is the best way through and will help other travelers or take the time to find a way around the trees Hey, plan crash let's go for the third try third time's the charm right third time's always the charm we got it this time i believe I just have to think really carefully about how we kind of approached it. Because I feel like we had a good approach. The first time, not the best approach, but okay. Second one, better, but we made a mistake fairly early on, which kind of cost us a card. Which, a uh, card doesn't sound like a lot, but in a scenario where we basically came up three or four kind of enemies, um, sort of light, that was a bit of a problem. So, uh, Option one, clear the trees from the road. Really, guys? Was the was the other one? Is the other one just like get muddled or something? Within the cultist sanctum, you step in. Yeah, we've been here before. We know. We know. Um, I mean, that's probably gonna happen. Other option is worse. Is that like? I'm trying to think what would be worse than that. That's pretty bad. What could possibly be worse than that? Clear the trees with a saw. <laughs> yeah, really, that should have been possible, right? I guess it's not the right kind of saw. It's like an amputation saw. It's, you know, not meant for wood. Use items. I mean, we can use items to get stuff going. I get the feeling that maybe I should bring like the med pack in instead of precaution for this one. Right. Choose some cards. Cards to discard. I just need to... I need a fast start to this scenario, don't I? Really? What's the best way to approach this? Okay. What's the best way to approach this? I know I want to, like, open one door and open another. That's what I did before. And that worked pretty well. This scenario is... This um, scenario, this room, is the most scariest room. Because they have... Living bones that can move really quick. There's a living spirit that can cause us a lot of trouble. But ultimately, if we kill the, the enemies in this room, these two rooms are actually fairly straightforward. This is just all imps. And this is like imps and I think one living spirit. So there's like less enemies in this one. This one is definitely the hardest room. And I always have been leaving that till last. Now, maybe that's a mistake. Maybe what I should do is I should actually try and try and get this one early. Then open these two and just hold this door. Could be a better way of doing it. A fast start, you say, open all the doors. Well, opening all the doors is not the worst strategy in this one because you've got... You have got a lot of ranged enemies, but they are very slow to move. And because of just, like, if you block the melee enemies, they'll just generally get clogged up behind them. So they won't really be able to move, but they do have a lot of range. So you could definitely get some bad RNG and then just lose flat, I suppose, by doing it that way. Anyway, we need to get rid of a couple of cards, so I guess I have to get rid of what's not in my plan. What's not in my plan? I mean, I'm going to euthanize something absolutely. I'm going to... I'm probably not going to play Research the Cure. I think I have to keep this in hand for a little bit. 
It would be nice maybe to play it early, actually, to just get rid of the Sunkeeper stuff. But I'm just so wary of burning a card early in this scenario. This is just all about stamina, this scenario. It really is. I need this. This is always quite good. So I think I can get rid of this, this, and potentially precaution. Those three. That still gives me, like, my core kind of first turn. Try the right door. I think I'm going to try the right door first. I do think that's probably the right play, ultimately. The idea here is, is that we want to separate some of these guys from each other as well, a little bit. You went to the right first, then split off to the top when it was almost cleared. Yeah, I mean, this is the easiest room, for sure. This is the hardest, this is the easiest, and this is somewhere in between. But the good thing about this room is that you can open it and just leave it. Because it's it's imps, and they often don't move, or they move very slow. And if you block, if you kind of play on this side of the, of the scenario, like if you play in here, up in here maybe, it's quite unlikely that they actually will... Or you'll maybe get hit by a couple, but it's quite unlikely that all of them are going to get, you know, around into here and, and start screwing you over, so... Um... Scurry would be quite good here, to be honest. Scurry would be very nice here, actually. Uh, oh, I need, these are cards I want to get rid of, right? Um, I'll still take over. Um, Shed Nightmare. And Brain Age. There will be... I Okay, so the first turn looks something like positioning and just getting ready. So defensive stance and uh, righteous strength. Really good opening sort of play for this character. Mind's weakness plus uh, empathetic assault. We'll move to the door here. I think that's probably where I want to be um, for you. This is the weird part because I don't really have anything for this character to do. And that's that. This is the kind of the trick. Unfortunately, with Sawbones, is that occasionally he has these turns. I don't really like it. It would have been maybe better to have kept precaution to at least do something this turn, but I need to get rid of something. Um, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. I might not need this. I just need to keep this and this in hand, really. And this and this. Seems okay. Here, we're going to strengthen up. I could, I could bust down the door now, but I really just don't think it's a great idea on the very first turn to do that. I would have to basically use up a lot of my other stuff. Wait, you thought I was ending the stream? So confused. No. <laughs> Everyone ended the stream. I was trying to find uh, some space on my hard drive to, uh, for, this, for the recording for today's stream. You also kept the enemies by the doorway to limit their movement. Yeah, I mean we've got we've got some decent invis invis on the the mind thief here, right? So there is no reason as to why we can't get that kind of thing to work for us. So ideally, what you want to do is you want to just kind of get slightly out of line of sight of some of these hexes here, which I think is probably around about here. But ultimately, I do want to separate these guys at some point, so. Yep, 
The idea being to separate them out. And we'll um we'll go from there. I got the invis cloak here too, which I didn't have last time. I did not have. I don't think I necessarily want to jump like really straight in. I'll just use dark. Um, I might just use Frigid Apparition. I know that I'm going to be probably short resting soon for this. I want to try and get the flying enemies to come out. So I may need to kind of move here. And... Uh, I don't want to waste both of my early initiatives here. It have to be something like this. 29, 56, 29, 67. That works out quite nicely. And then you go super late on this and see what happens. I think that's really the play. In a weird way, I might want to go plus 10 here, but I won't. I think I actually want to generate the uh, light to use next turn, potentially. That's fine. I think I'll do scale of scales of justice next turn. All right. Open the door. Oh, come on. Don't draw the bless on the door. Right, so they're not moving at all. And they're going really... Oh, this is really bad. I should have gone plus 10. Oh, no, it wouldn't have mattered. 72. No, it wouldn't have mattered. But we can separate the list living spirit quite nicely now. He's going to go to here. And from here, he is not going to have line of sight of anybody. Hmm. That's interesting. Might just be a nice idea to go in this here, to be honest. Hmm. Am I planning to jump in with the with the sword bones? That's the trick. I could jump in with the sword bones, but it's not gonna be the best turn. Actually, if I go here, then he can't move to there. That's actually better, I think. Let's we'll sit here. All right, we're definitely going to need to get some uh, some cards back here because we're going to be probably going late, probably using um, Corrupting Embrace and probably Phantasmal Killer. So I think I probably want to get Phantasmal Killer back here. Then next turn we set up. It would be nice actually if we generate some ice next turn maybe. I guess I could shed Nightmare which is pretty good the next time. And then Phantasmal Killer. Knock, knock. I know I'm going to need some more invis so we'll just pick that off. Devs in the house. You know, like, I could go up in here now. So dangerous, though. I mean, I have the invis cape, so... I'll get attacked by... This guy for four. But I will be able to get the euthanize off on this and the stun off on this next turn and then go invisible, maybe. That could be quite good. Mm. 
Yeah, okay. Risk it for a biscuit. I think it's good getting the poison up on those guys. I should also consider using some potions here. I know I'm going to euthanize and syringe probably this, but that means I'm going to have to go invis next turn. I should start using items because I can just start getting them back. Hopefully with my card flip. I guess I get both of those cards back. Because ultimately... Ultimately, we will probably be looking to do that again. Or to run away. Do it and then run away, maybe. That's fine. I don't mind that. Works out kind of okay. Slightly different approach, but I think a, a good approach. Nice. We'll take those. Anything we can get. Anything we can get. So this would be the time I use my cloak, I guess. We just go for the quick euthanize. I think that makes sense. We'll probably use the cloak. We know we're doing this and this. And to be honest, it's probably better for me to do it on early initiative so I can reposition the... Um, I can reposition my invis if I need to. good that works out pretty well no that's not when you're supposed to use that I'm going to use items really aggressively early as well because I feel like the last few times we've lost this scenario, I probably held onto my items a little bit too long, you know, with the hope that, oh man, we're going to, you know, something crazy is going to happen. Um, well, I'm going to attack two things here with the spear. If I get this right. Move six, though. Yeah, I'd rather block that from happening, right? I would rather go invis here. I think I'll just probably attack this guy. Nice. Not bad. We get in there. Go here. Give me the door. They can't hit what they don't see exactly. Into the shadows. nice these guys can't do anything again i have to be a little bit concerned with my speed of play you know i need to be kind of get in there i think um All right, nearly dead, nearly dead, nearly dead. 
Right, so for me, you were playing a multiplayer campaign, and right as you earned 10 rep, your companion got disconnected. It seems to have prevented our Sunkeeper from unlocking. Is there a way, you know, to unlock a class without restarting your campaign? I have had an issue like that myself, actually, where we had a similar thing happen. Um, it all kind of bugged out, and I lost all of the progress towards the battle goal. Uh, no, not so bad, towards the personal goal, personal uh, quest. Um, it didn't actually... Ha I think it happened at the end of the scenario or something. It was very strange. I don't really have a kind of any official thing I can help you with, I'm afraid. I've not come across a way to resolve that. Can you... Is it, is it possible for just one person to open the game and kind of complete the retirement and then invite everybody after that? That would be my suggestion. So just let one person open the game in single player, which you can do. And then just let that person kind of do that retirement thing. And then once that's done, then let everybody join. Maybe that might help. Um... Hey, no problem. Or grab the scenario checkpoint, which will take you to the last round of the previous scenario. Or that. Or listen to the devs. They know what they're doing. Ugh. I remember this happening a lot last time we played this too. Um... I remember that happening a bunch. I guess I do kind of want this guy to go here. I guess I could block him in to go to there. No, I think I kind of want him to go to there. Then that frees up this spot for a nice preventionist key next turn. <clears throat> it's not working for you. This drink is stopping. If someone could tell me in chat what the answer to the question is, you'd appreciate it. In the squid guide, I mentioned a second character, but refuse to say who for the synergies. Any chance you could say here a specific synergy is? Yes. It is music note. Um... It is music note. Where's my better Twitch TV emotes? But yeah. It's music note. <laughs> I 
Nice. There you go. We'll take a little bit of luck there. We'll take a little bit of that. That's fine. No problem. All right, this room's going pretty well, I would say. Maybe famous last words, but I mean, I, I quite like the way this is going. Honestly, I might just do these, just disarm these guys here. It might be easier for me. I don't have to immobilize myself then either. And then I can just do the bloody saw. I could just do the bloody saw combo right here. Or I could do the bloody saw combo here. But really getting the wound up on this is preferable. So I think I'm just going to sit here like this. I think this is better. And I don't need to immobilize myself then either. So we've got bloody saw in hand. So we need to go get curative mixture. Nope. Uh, hold back the pain. Um, so we got this for a stun. We got this for a stun. Yeah, this is not bad. It's a good turn. A little bit, a little bit annoying because this was the time we were going to do good stuff. But I guess that's a bit annoying. Ah, no, it's fine. Could have been a lot worse. It is annoying when the enemies do that kind of action in this particular scenario, though, because this is all like a time scenario, really. Like, the enemies, if you had, if I had as much time as I wanted, you know, there was a couple of enemies less. You could easily do it. This is just a real test of endurance, this particular scenario. So you just have to be very good at managing your, your stamina. Them healing does make what I did with the whole kind of like poison everything play significantly worse though, I will say. Um, All right, well, we're going to have to short rest next turn anyway. It's too bad. May as well use it. That's what it's there for, even though they've got so many shields. Um, probably going to short rest next turn. I, I think so. Okay. Well, I can get a good amount of poison going here again. Potentially, this is a good time to reset the moon earring as well, maybe. After we've done the jump. So, I can go... Stun this way. It's probably better to attack these two. So, let's try and figure out a way. What have we got? Four, five, six. So, I could go one, two, three, four, five, six. I could go... One, two, three, four, five, six. But I don't really need to poison this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That might be better. I just ignore this one guy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Good to get a second negative condition up on this guy. Because maybe we could then just kill him with the uh, euthanize next turn instead. Oh, hang on. Before we do that, we want to use uh, this for sure. Gotta get that double stun. Well, that's value sound right there. Hey, no problem, Kaltar. Sorry, this, the stream's obviously not uh, buffering very well for you today. Bad buffer. <laughs> hey, Zek. So we are on short rests with everyone, basically. 
And we got three things stunned. It's not the worst time to long rest. Or I could just say, okay, I'm going to short rest on one of these characters. The problem is that I think I've short rested on the Sawbones a lot. And the Sawbones is always the one that ends up getting like exhausted. These guys can be quite nasty. I think I short rest here. Sure. Not the not the best to lose there, but I think the fact that I can just euthanize this and potentially just stun one of these guys is just too too good an opportunity to pass up. So then basically we only have to deal with him, which means I can comfortably long rest on uh, both of these guys and get back all these items, which is really what you want. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'll be going down to eight. So having the mind's weakness um, in my hand doesn't extend my life anymore. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go down to eight. So that's fine. So there's no reason for me. I'm going to end up with one card regardless. And I don't have a card that I can kind of get it back. So I think we'll leave the mind's weakness up. Uh, pretty, could be a pretty scary card. Not sure which one I prefer to stun now. Maybe the curse one. Oh. Do I really want to get a curse? I guess I could just stun them to stop them from doing this, so I don't really care. Rather not rather not take the uh the curses, I think. Turning down video quality helps you sometimes, but you don't often see that option on my stream. Yeah, I need to get partner for that, really. To get to get guaranteed transcoding, I need to get partner. But I did turn my stream quality down to 936, which is why, what it is now, rather than it being um, really high. Because I did used to stream in 1080, but that would be a kind of a bit of a problem, maybe occasionally for people. So most sort of people suggest doing it at 936 is like a nice happy medium where you don't really notice the difference too much but it's a little bit quicker also like if you go down to 720 i think it looks like a potato so potato stream mm. probably get rid of this we get rid of this Phantom Gorilla gifted a tier one sub to tomorrow tripled. Hey, Phantom. Thanks so much for donating a sub. I really appreciate it. Welcome tomorrow tripled. Make sure to thank Phantom in chat. It's very, very kind of them. Thank you so much, Phantom. Let's get me to partner. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. You know, a guy can dream. A guy can dream. One day with hard work and determination, I'm sure we'll get there. Um, probably on for a little uh, cheeky holy strike play here, aren't I? I think. Let's hope they don't go on 20. That would be awkward. I'd love to try and kill these guys. I mean, I could go for like Brain Leech Corrupting Embrace. I mean, this is going to be a big damage. Big, big damage. 
Then we just have to worry about this guy. Mm, I quite like it. Oh, that's some good initiative draws right there. That's what I'm talking about. Big draws, big draws. Tiplin, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. It's all good. Let's get to that point though where we've like done one rest cycle. I don't wanna I wanna kinda get clear of this. So this would be a disadvantaged attack if I attack here. Might be a good way to clear some of my bad bad modifiers potentially. Oh, or not. Nice. And plier magic as well. Thank you so much for the follows, guys. I really appreciate it. Welcome in. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're having a great day, both of you. Ugh. Actually get bad draws out of that. You gotta be kidding me. Um. Maybe a nice big strengthened hit here. What's he doing? Attack six range four. Ugh. I mean, he's muddled now. I didn't really time this very well because now I was going to try and kill both of these with the, with that. I don't need to anymore. Um, I guess I can just attack you for two. Get some damage in. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really going to move too much there. I've got a good empowering command next turn, though. Ooh, emp oh, wow. Empowering command could be insane here. I've just seen the synergy. If I can use... Um, hold back the pain. Empowering command. Ooh. Why have I never seen... Why have I never thought of that before? I mean, it works. Oh man, I could I could absolutely decimate. Do the thing. I'm gonna do the thing. I didn't think about that combo before. But that's actually nuts. I've been saying I've been missing I've been missing a little bit of AoE. Spicy. And this would do it. So we go this into this. <laughs> Empowering command. A bit spicy. Insert righteous strength, but we use the boots to go before. That I like. Ooh, I like that a lot. That is very spicy, chat. Very spicy indeed. Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. <laughs> um, I really want to stun this guy, though. I guess we can do it like this. There it is. There it is. I mean, we will have disadvantage against this guy, so I kind of feel like maybe I should just get a hit in here. All right. Maybe a bit of a waste. 
This is where I don't need it, though. It should also work with one of the Mind Thief cards that forces an ally to attack. Yeah, it should do. It's pretty crazy, actually. Do I want to bless? I don't want to bless afterwards, to be honest. Don't think I need to bless, right? Oh, boy. This combo, though. Ho, oh. ho. Oh. Now, but what do you get back? Do you get the cloak back? Honestly, I might just get the cloak back. The cloak is going to do a lot of work. And now, the, you know, the temptation is obviously to go for this. It's like the most expensive item. It's also just insane. I guess this gives me more flexibility than this. So I'll, I'll get this. And also this particular scenario is tight on stamina. So that will, that will help a lot. Yeah, I guess because of, of the fact that this scenario is so tight on stamina, it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. All right. This has been a very clean first room, but we've had clean first rooms before and still lost. So... That's no, like, really good indication that, yeah, this is going to be... Like a completely winning... A winning uh, run. Newt, newt. Wait, apparent commands and text attack still procs the Swordbones AoE? Yes, because the Swordbones AoE says till the end of round. That's what I just figured out and was like, hang on a minute. This is actually broken. It's actually broken. Newt, newt. I can't believe we're only just figuring this out. <laughs> Look at all that gold. Hey, Clover. You have the Sawbones and Sunkeep in your party. You're looking forward to trying that combo. Now, it's actually really good. That's... Well, I've been moaning while we've been playing this scenario in the last last week that we were missing some AoE. I was like, oh, man. I, just, I feel like we just don't have the ability to clear a room really quickly. And that just clears a room so quickly if we can set that up. It's been like right under my nose the whole time and I just haven't realized. I just, as soon as I did that, I was like, oh, this would be a good turn to use Empowering Command. Wait. <laughs> like the light bulb going on. Um, yes. We'll give a card to the Mind Thief because the Mind Thief has less cards than the Sun Keeper. Doesn't really matter too much. We're going to probably long rest soon. Or in the Sword Bones, we'll definitely long rest. Probably. probably just play a couple of turns out on the Sun Keeper. So I think we're going to go top room next because top room is another fairly easy room. With music now and sun, you can also do it two additional times. What well, with um, yeah, because you've got what is it? Uh, commanding presence. No, but that's already a AOE we attack. It requires two unlock classes plus setup. Not broken, just a good combo. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it depends on other like like other buffs, right? 
call to action. Right. I got you. It depends really, right, on what on what your other things to set up, right? Because if you do have other buffs and things, then it can get kind of out of control. But the thing is that it's capped. Like the most broken AoEs in Gloomhaven are the uncapped ones or ones that specify a range that can be extended. Like it's like Inferno is broken because it's just a room. Flurry of Axes is broken because you can increase the range. Um... So any of those kinds of like AoEs that just kind of have that uncapped potential are generally usually the best. So this is always going to still be capped at adjacents. So it's going to be strong, but it's like playing the Brute's Whirlwind like constantly, right? That's very good, but um, is it going to be like completely game winning? I, I don't know. Maybe. Away you go, mine thief. Yeah, the all enemies cards. Uh, I could blast the door down, but it feels a bit risky. I think there's living corpses just in this one. I think I'm pretty much done with skeletons, right? Maybe there's one more skeleton in this room? I think I'm pretty much done with skeletons. That's good, because I really dislike skeletons. <laughs> they are really not fun to play against. Um Oh if it's a if it's a long rest turn Ah oh, that's annoying. Maybe I should have got rid of the because I could have hamstring and then got rid of the thing. This is the, this is the problem with this character now, right? We're getting to that point where it's like, oh we don't quite have everything that we want. We're gonna definitely have to use the major stamina potion. Now is the time to get rid of the mind's weakness, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, we'll go to six, seven. So yeah. We will be playing that. Darkened Skies is a great room cleanser. I do like Darkened Skies. I have warmed to it a little bit more. The only problem with that one is that it's kind of anti-synergistic to what the character likes to do generally. Like, so you don't really have a great follow-up play if it doesn't work out, if that makes sense. I like it when, like, a character can kind of do their, do the damage or do the thing and then they have, like, a good follow-up play as well. They can then get away or something but that character kind of wants to hang around at the back of the room but that card wants you to go into the middle of the room so it's kind of like anti-synergistic to what that character wants so if you do do that and then you get like some bad flips then you could end up you know getting cracked back quite hard by the enemy on a character that doesn't really want to take much damage so it's a bit of a riskier one compared to some of the other ones i would say but yeah absolutely it's still very good it doesn't have like the it doesn't have like a, a card though, like Blood Pact, for example, on um, on Berserker that really makes it broken because you just get that extra plus one attack, right? You can kind of you can have a Doom up, but it's not quite as good. Unfortunately, there if only there was a card that doomed all enemies or something. <laughs> you need an ability to be able to doom all enemies just for one turn, and then you play that card, and then that'd be insane. <laughs> Probably be one of the best uh, damage dealing cards in the game. I know this is one of the cards I want to get back, but this is not, so I won't use this. Okay. 
Goodbye. Uh, Shared Nightmare is kind of just a move for me right now. It really is just a move. I don't use it for the top at all because I have so many better options with the top. At least Brain Leech could give me a nice sort of like one-two punch. Let me get rid of Got to be careful of my initiative with her, though. One, two, three, four. Like, again, this is not a great hamstring prevention is key, but I think i got to do it because I've got to get in there. But I'll, I'll go late with it. I think that's probably the best play. Um, definitely want to go invisible. Mind's weakness and break the door and go invisible. Does just give me, like, bad initiatives from that point. I have to go after 67 here, which is possible. And we do something like this and this. We can probably get into, um... It's like a living corpse's face with that. Oh, I messed that up. Restart. I may have forgotten that my initiative on the sore bones was before. I guess I could have done the... Maybe it'll have to be, but maybe I could do the plus 10. And that'll be fine. Oh, it's going to have to be. Okay, well, maybe we'll just do plus 10 on it instead. That would make it... 72? There's a good chance that everything acts before that, so... No, no, the other way. There you go. Good, good. Right. Plus one. Two. What are you guys doing? Oh, there is more living bones. Okay. Oh, a lot of elites here, huh? Well, this guy's going to try and get feisty. Got to be a little bit careful about the door here. Don't really want to give it up. Especially as these guys are going afterwards. So I probably want to go... I probably want to run this way and stun this Living Bones or something. With her. One, two... Oh, I could... So it's one, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five. Which I can do with my boots. So I could go to there. Which would actually work out okay. They're not attacking. I just really want to, like, target the list living spirit with the mind thief, I think. Like, that's the, the mind thief's job. Okay, let's just keep moving then. Every space might count here, so I'm not going to take it for granted. It's nice getting this living spirit to move a little bit closer. Ooh, that's going to change things up a little bit. Makes things slightly interesting. Realistically, though, I need I need to be the one going for these these guys here. It would have been great if I could get to the back there. Man, I wish I had one more movement. I wish I did. I guess I could change up my move and go to here now. And we stun there, and then basically Sunkeeper just holds down this side of the room. And we can kind of quickly dispatch these. I don't mind it. Hey, Anamine. 
giving this one another try. Well, I just, I just, I never like leaving a scenario on one. Um, especially after the amount of time that we spent on it last time, so. I just hate it. So I know I'm going to want preventionist key and I know I'm probably going to want to hold back the pain. So now is a good time to use this. Okay, good. It's going to sit there. So Sunkeeper is going to go to here. Lock these two, these two bad guys down. So next turn we can do scales of justice, and we could do like hammer blow, for example. Which is which is a, which is a pretty nice turn on these guys. Um, I need to keep in mind that empowering command combo though, and maybe start to like walk over there a little bit. That would be good. Um. All right. Do we need to get any cards back, though? Is there anything here that I really want? Right now, no. So I, I, I will pass on that. Mac Maxen. Yeah. Or Mac Maxen. Thank you so much for the uh, follow. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Is three spears broken as a class? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things broken. I think in digital, they've gone some ways as to nerf it slightly. So the re... Um, I don't know if you see my three spears guide. But in that, I go through the in the initial uh, kind of overview. I go through like the broken combo with that character versus um, like in combat with digital versus physical. So in digital, because they resolve all damage uh, in an AOE at the same time, you don't get the option to like refresh power potions, which is where the broken kind of damage dealing side of that character comes out. I think. Um, it's still broken in the sense that you can just pretty much with not too many cards go infinite. Um, but the thing is, is that going infinite will not necessarily win you the scenario. But it will allow you to get as much loot as you could ever possibly need. So, yeah. There's, um, there's definitely some very broken elements to it. It's also a character that once you get to max prosperity level or very high prosperity level, you get a couple of items. Some of the most broken things in Gloomhaven are the items, and that character specifically abuses them. So, sort of by nature of that, it's it's broken, yeah. Sneak Shot, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub. Really appreciate it. Six months in a row. Thank you so much for all of the support. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it for using your Bezos bucks here. <laughs> the quest continues, my friend. Thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great day. And hey, Brambeard, how's it going? It's not broken. The items are. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that that's the way to see it, right? There's many things in Gloomhaven that are not perfect, and uh, that is one of them. But you don't have to worry about it, because you won't be... Uh, honestly, that kind of stuff will not be... Um, will not be around in future games. Like, they won't make that mistake a second time. You will not see anything. So enjoy enjoy the busted nature of it. Because if you're planning on playing Frosthaven, trust me, you will not see anything as good as that in Frosthaven. That is for sure. Um, okay, so I think I'm doing scales and uh, hammer blow, right? This turn, I think. Euthanize! Nice. 
Okay, so that's one kind of problem dealt with. I get him quite low. We'll get rid of this scary man. Um, do I want to get a car back? Now I got to start thinking about it a little bit. If I can stop these two, this guy's not doing anything. So it's these two over here that are going to be a bit of a problem next round. Got to think about. Hmm. What would be good? What would be good? You know, I know I want to do this, and I know I want this. To be honest, my turn's not bad regardless. I'm just attacking for five, which is not bad. I guess maybe I might have to shield up next time. It's possible. If I was to get a card back, what would it be? Well, it's going to be the Holy Strike or Scales of Justice. Neither of which they have to pair well with, like, a lower card. So I guess I could. I can't get to this guy. That's the big deal right now. Defensive stance is going to screw the movement up on this. I guess I could get tactical order back. Allows me to move to there. Nah, I think I'm okay for now. Maybe next turn. <laughs> Okay, so we prevention is key. These two again. I think that's pretty important. Um, it's either that or we go... Or we go for it. We could go for it. They're both fairly low here. We've got a decent chance with an advantage to attack. You're attacking for three. And I might be able to do that. I could always follow up here with Frigid Apparition, which I've got. I've also got... Um, you know, potentially I've got Empathetic Assault here to just give myself advantage on, on something. So if I do miss... Um, or I could always stun this. Attack this with Dark Frenzy. I've got things I can do. It'd be a bit risky. But it would probably be the better kind of overall play. And then to be honest, I'm just shielding up here, aren't I? And just attacking for five. Probably on this guy, but I'm a little bit worried about this living bones. It would be nice if I could maybe get to this spot. But I don't have the movement. I think this might be okay. I have to be a bit careful here though, because if I lose, this could like this could be a really pivotal turn if something crazy happened here. Well, that's good from the imps. So that's nice. That's one less thing to worry about. What's my these retirement? Side scenarios. I think we got one more to do. Yeah, and that would get us Eclipse. So do I think that I can kill this with an attack? What are you doing? He's just cursing. Okay, well, it makes sense to just stun this then. It's either that or I move somewhere to try and do the double stun. No, I don't think so. Okay, good. So that... He's dead. Um, I don't want to get too close so that this guy gets involved. So we'll just attack. I mean, it's three plus that. It's attack zero. I mean, I've got a good attack modifier deck. Got a really good attack on a fire deck. Let's go for it. Well, I guess I wasn't going to do much damage here either. Alright, I'll, I'll help out attacking this then. We're going to need a we're going to need a miracle flip. 
Do I move away here? One, two. I think I do. I need to get out of this little corner that I've locked myself into. Move right and use long spear. Unfortunately, there's uh, an obstacle there. Otherwise, yes, that would definitely be the play. <laughs> this damn little... What is it? Skulls? This little skull ornament display there. Oh, plus two. There you go. We're, we're going to get cursed, but it's going to die next turn, so... I mean, I'll trade one curse for that, for sure. Well, three curses technically, but one each. This one's a little bit awkward. <laughs> I definitely want to play both of these, but... I can't get anywhere to actually use them. I guess I just use precaution top. Yeah, this is like one of those kind of awkward ones where I don't really... I don't really love my turn on any of these guys. I mean, to be honest, a short rest here to be able to jump into there would be fantastic right now. It would be so good. But am I am I getting close to the point where actually I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm getting close to like dying, you know? I think I've got a good chance of killing this one. By just doing this into this. And then it's literally just these two. This guy's a bit scary. He can attack for four on two things. But I, I can probably see that out. Okay, perfect. There you go. Easy. Nothing to worry about. Base attack and get that refresh modifier. I guess I could. I think... Just doing the shield to prevent this is maybe a little bit better, but. It's not bad. All right. Not bad. We should technically get the kill. Well, I guess they're going to heal a little bit, so maybe we won't get the kill. We should have a good chance of doing some damage here. We're probably going to have to short rest on the Mind Thief, I think. Maybe not, because in theory, next turn we can jump in and prevention is key. Oh, no, we're going to long rest next turn. So no, we probably can't, actually. Uh, let you go. Let's let you go first. See what kind of damage you can do. All right, good job I let you go first. <laughs> yeah, see, like, everybody's on a long rest now. Who really, really needs to long rest? Like, really needs to long rest. <laughs> well, you've all got the same amount of cards, so that's awkward. <laughs> wow, delayed wow there. Um, I guess Sunkeeper should to get the items back, right? They've got three great items out so really that character should this character should long rest next time
And people thought I was crazy putting Iron Helm on a Mind Thief. And he thought I was crazy. He's only taken... That's her first attack she's taken the entire scenario. I mean, I'm strengthened, so maybe I should... Uh, maybe I should be the one here. Go in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll go down to six, so there's no point really. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I'd have eight. Go down to seven, so then, yeah, there's no point. I may as well keep that up. Uh... All right, maybe not the best. Now we might struggle a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, I think I want that spot. One of the rooms has corpses, right? This one, maybe? I mean, I think we've dealt with most of the corpses, though. Might be wrong. Now might be a good time to just use the stun powder, to be honest. Just like buys me a turn, right? Don't have to take any stupid damage from a four here. Like, it saves a lot of damage. I've been holding on to that. I've been nursing that as well. I need I need a couple of move cards, and I think do no harm is going to be quite good in the on the stretch. So. Got to be careful here because we are running quite low. Could say that Holy Strike is something to get rid of. We're going to have disadvantage often in the last room. So attacking for two is not great. It's going to be a race in the last room. I suppose this is an attack five on the bottom. If I really, really needed it in a pinch, it does something. I still felt like I needed... I didn't manage to set up in this room, but I think this is going to be a key component to the last room. Tactical order is how I make my light, really. So I need that. Um, mobilizing Axiom is just as reliable as Hack 4. It's probably... I guess it's got to be Holy Strike, really. Maybe a bit dangerous because we've just lost two stuns. That was like back-to-back -back losing of stuns there. That might come back to um, to bite us a little bit. Hopefully not, though. Like, obviously, now it's just the uh, it's just damage, right? That's all we need to do. All just damage now. Don't think I'm going to be able to empowering command this turn, so I'll probably just.
Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, start getting to work on this. On this Impolite. Doing damage to him is pretty hard with his... um. disadvantage that it gives me <clears throat> how many doors are there three might be tough to set up sun saw aoe with ranged dims quite possibly but if we keep them disarmed a lot they won't move away so hopefully that kind of thing can, can work out pretty well right now i feel okay but i've said this before the difference being though that we've got like a medium difficulty room coming up whereas we've kind of cleared the hardest room like uh, usually every other playthrough of this so far we did it this way around and that caused us to kind of lose our way um like by the time we got to here we were just like a couple of rounds short we were sort of two or three rounds short I'd, I'd still i feel pretty good where we are right now but i don't feel like amazing right now i also think like this room can lull you into like a sense of just yeah it's easy we can just win right or i don't think that's necessarily always gonna be the case Right, I, well, I can I can pretty much just run away with the mind thief if I wanted to here. Do I have boots, I do. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Ultimately, um, we're gonna get my attack. All right, on to the last room, chat. <clears throat> we love deadly difficulty, yeah. We're thinking about getting Gloomhaven easy to get started. <laughs> so, yes, but you have to be patient. So, I've been playing the game for a long, long time, stupid. A long, long time. Um, I've made guides on pretty much every element of the game. So if you do want any help learning the game, check out my YouTube channel. Absolutely. Um, but it, it's one of those kind of games where really um, you have to approach it in a slightly different way. Like be willing to fail initially because the game is quite unique in many elements. Much more different than, than let's say like your average dungeon crawler game. Like it's much more of a tactical puzzle game at times. Like, sometimes you do have to retreat. You do have to do these things. Whereas, and like, some people who like to play, like, RPGs would be like, oh, I would just charge in every time. Like, there's definitely elements of that, and you can do that. But sometimes, you know, you really do have to kind of think a little bit and be aware of what the enemies are doing. So, I play the tutorial. Um, be patient. Um, be willing to lose. And, uh, and if you give it the time, you'll probably fall in love with the game. Like, I haven't many other people have but you really do need to like give it time like it some people it clicks immediately so maybe it will for you but some other people it really doesn't and it and and uh you do need to to give the game that time draws the line got you draws the line is also incredible um for doing that absolutely so if um if that's something that you'd be interested in doing as well i would i would highly recommend that draws the line if, if you're talking about physical 
Um, it'd be a good time to give the Mind Thief back some cards, wouldn't it? It'd be a really good time to give the Mind Thief back some cards. That would carry me away, right? It's adjacent. It'd be a great time to give you back some cards. That's huge, actually. It gives me a lot more play. See, this is why things start to get a bit scary, right? I need to move four. I'll get that one back, too, just for a little heal if I need it. Don't think I will, though. <laughs> no need to call him stupid. It was just a question. Okay. That's his username, guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get into it because it was recommended as easier. Yeah, so, like, so, Gloomhaven is a board game, right? Whereas, like, Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder is a role-playing game. Gloomhaven is a board game that has, like, some role-playing elements to it and is a dungeon, it's more of a, it's a dungeon crawler, right? Dungeons and & Dragons is not a dungeon crawler, per se. I mean, some people may play it that way. Like, you might have a campaign that's like that. Maybe you're your your group of friends like to play it that way but it's more of a story game right where you're gonna go on adventures you're gonna story have interesting interactions the game is not just running through dungeons gloomhaven is basically running through dungeons and then you have like your character progression is kind of like you know happening in the background gloomhaven progression so you you work on that so say so it is easier in the sense that it's a board game the rules are fixed um you know the game provides you with all of the content you don't need to come up with any content it's there for you to play with and enjoy. There is, you know, set strategies in the game that will perform well. There are ones that won't perform as well, but there's all of those things that you would expect to have in a complete game that's bookend is there, you know? So in that respect, it's easier. But what I would say it's like to do, to be be good at it is like, like any kind of like game where there are rules and you can do, be good or bad at it. Like, I find it hard to be, like, bad at D&D &D unless you, like, I don't know, you're just an obnoxious person and you just don't play, like, fun. I don't know. Like, if it was, how could you be a really bad... I mean, I guess you could always just walk into traps and stuff, I guess, but I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, you can... In order to, like, get the game down and to have good success of winning scenarios, which you need to do in this game, right? In Dungeons & Dragons, if your team doesn't perform very well... The dungeon master can kind of fudge a few rolls and on the story goes. That it's not really the case. You can you have to complete scenarios to progress the story. So you do have to hit like a like a, like a minimum playability to be able to continue in the game. Looking for more structure. Yeah, absolutely. For, if you're looking for that kind of thing, I think this is a good place. I always get very I always get very anxious to suggest Gloomhaven to people when like D and D comes up. Because I think a lot of people go like, oh, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, the board game, which is absolutely not the way to sell this game. Because I think if you go into it thinking that, you might be a bit disappointed. Because Dungeons and Dragons really lives in being creative. And this is a game with set rules and structures and a set way to play. And there are tactics and strategy involved in playing the game well. Whereas, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is like, you can be all creative, you can do funny things, and you can still succeed and have fun and have a great evening with your friends. Gloomhaven, you will need to like be engaged in the game and and um, work out those systems to play really well. Like it is a game, not a story, if you like. So I always get very anxious when that comparison comes up, just because I know that it's a comparison a lot of people make. But personally, I don't usually find to be a very truthful one. I, f I find it to be. I think it's better to. to look at it from a board game perspective than it is to look at it from like a role-playing game perspective for sure and then if you wanted to get down to the you know the brass tacks of it it's a dungeon crawling game i 
But also, the, the community for this game is excellent. Stupid. So, you know, if you have any questions or anything, everybody, myself included, everybody is always very helpful and willing to help out. Gloomhaven has an awesome community. Don't want to hit that door quite yet. Uh, I'm tempted to... Um, am I going to long rest next turn? I'm going to long rest here. I could long rest here. And I'm just going to move now, right? And long rest there. Ah, uh, let's synchronize all the long rests. That makes a lot of sense. Whiskers, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome in. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You heard the devs care? <laughs> uh, give or take the devs. <laughs> You can use Gloomhaven map tiles for D&D. &D. It works surprisingly well. That's a great idea, actually. That's one thing about D&D &D that's always, like, I always find kind of strange. And they're like, now, now the map appears. Like, when an encounter happens or something. And it's very, like, how much can I move? Because it's, it's always done, right, in, like, kind of, like, is it, like, done in meters and feet? Like, it's actually done in physical measurements, right, at times. They're, like, you can move up to this amount. And, uh... So it, it could lend itself quite well. Yeah, I could see it's like a hex-based system because you could just say like this is like a hex is a meter or something. Like you could easily kind of um, make the rules work in that respect, couldn't you? You thought digital would be easier to manage? 100% agree with that. I think if you, I think if you have no, in, I think at this point in time, if you have no intention on like or, or you don't want to spend the money to get the physical version of the game, um, then if you're, if I was to buy it like today, if if I had like if I was to start Gloomhaven afresh today and I had never played it before, my first step would be to buy Jaws of the Lion and play that physically. I think then it would be probably to buy the digital version of Gloomhaven, and if I enjoyed that, then maybe buy the physical version of Gloomhaven. But ultimately, you might be able to skip that now and go straight to Frosthaven, depending on when that comes out and, and all of that good stuff, so. Right, we're gonna have to be quick in this last room. Really quick. Like so quick. Do I get rid of Dark Frenzy here? I think it's like, it's an attack four, five, six. I'm just thinking like Empathetic Assault could just, that strengthen could be huge here. I've got curses and I know that I'm going to be attacking them with disadvantage. So curses could play a huge part in this last sort of push through. And Empathetic Assault just kind of does it. I also could just attack more and more and more and just don't worry about it. Just keep attacking. This is the faster card for killing stuff. This is maybe the better overall hedging card. I guess if my plan is just to keep attacking as much as possible, I should just not bother. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just go all out damage. And, uh, and hope that gets us through. And to be honest, for this character, I'm just playing for the Warhammer now. I'm doing Preventionist Key, playing for the Warhammer, Eagle Eye Goggles, hopefully refresh the Warhammer, go again. So I just need to keep those key pieces. So now it's really just get rid of Syringe. And um, this is it. So I need to bust the door down and probably run in, I would say, with the Sunkeeper. Bust the door down. Go in with the Sunkeeper. So what's a good card to play? I mean, Scales of Justice is nice, plus my boots. So I could do Scales of Justice. Mobilizing Order to blow that up. Move in for one. 
with the boots. Two, three. Probably get to something to stun it. I would think. But does I, do I really care about the stun if I'm just going to go in? I guess I'm going to go in late, aren't I? That is the key here. I could also just shield up with Righteous Strength. I could literally just run in with this. So I could do this and this. And then that gives me some more flexibility next turn to do something like... Tactical Order or... Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to do that. Okay. We'll get rid of that. Okay. Ah, this is kind of scary. All right, let's hope that we... I mean, if we draw a, if we draw a curse here, that's pretty annoying, actually. <laughs> no! No! Oh! We can't even get through the door, chat. Getting the hardest door in the world. I shouldn't have said anything. Why did I say it? I was like, oh, dude, if we draw a curse here, this would be really annoying. Oh, there you go. I should remember that I've got a microphone switched on and Gloomhaven is always listening. <laughs> Come on. Maybe we won't ever be able to get through the door. I mean, that, that actually really screws my complete... I'm actually going to have to restart because I can't, I can't play now. Like, what do I do? I move in and I hit this for four and then I don't have any of my cards to do that. A little bit... Spicy. Yeah, I think I have to restart turn. Bit cheesy there, chat. I can't... I think that really actually hoses me. And I'm not going to do what I did last time, which is just let it play out. Because this is such a tight scenario that that could be the loss right there. Because it, because then I wouldn't have any of these cards in my hand. I'd have to like just play other cards, which probably wouldn't work as well. No Mercy 99 gifted a tier 1 sub to Brambeard Gaming. This is their first gift sub in the channel. Hey, No Mercy. Thank you so much for gifting a sub to Brambeard. That's very, very kind of you. Pork frogs and guards in chat for No Mercy. I really appreciate the support. Welcome, Brambeard. That is incredibly kind of you, sir. Thank you so much. It really means a lot. So thank you. Gloomhaven is always listening. I know, but I never listen. I never listen. I can do it all again. Okay. And Tut Tut, thank you so much for the resub, dude. Seven months in a row. That is very, very kind of you as well, dude. Thank you so much. The quest continues, my friend. Here's to another seven months. <laughs> As the quest must go on forever, because it is mandatory. Right. So now I go after the mine thief. Oh, geez. This is so weird. If I draw a curse with the mine thief too, do we just uh we just we just end? We lost. Oh, there we go. Oh, there are living corpses in here. Oh, are they mobilizing me? I guess it doesn't matter, actually. Oh, I have a minor mana potion. That's good. Malchondrian gifted a tier one sub to Feldy13. Hey, Malchondrian. Thank you so much for gifting a sub, dude. Very kind of you. Hype train. Welcome, Feldy. Long time viewer. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Welcome to the quest. That's two months as well, actually. That's weird. I've never seen that happen before. Resub earned two months. Make sure to thank him in chat, Feldy. I really appreciate Malchondrian. Guards in chat. 
cards and pog pog frogs. We haven't played with uh with Toad in a while, actually. Maybe we need to bring Toad back on a weird beer Wednesday. The scam train initiated as well. Right, I think we're okay, right? They're not doing anything, they're not doing anything. Super. Slippy. <laughs> Good old Slippy. I still think that's the best artwork of any of any character in the game. Of anything in the game. Cannot be beaten. So are these guys gonna group up nicely for me or are they just gonna be a real pain? A real pain, I think, is the answer here. Oh, I wonder what we're going to draw. Oh. Shocking. I have now blocked the door. It's pretty good. The stream where we unlocked Slippy was so funny. It was good. That was definitely a highlight. So what do I do here? Um, Because the question is like, there's not really... This guy at the back is a bit annoying. I don't really like him. I do have the euthanize. I guess I'm going to probably poison these with corrupting... Uh, embrace next turn, most likely. I think we have to go for it. I think we know we have to go for it. So next turn I could go for the bloody saw or back the pain play with the stun. I feel like there's going to be a better time to do it. But I mean, when's that going to be? I would love to get my invis cape back. How big would that be? Smash, Hulk smash. We need it. We need the Hulk smash. Hey, brown beards. Thank you so much for, for paying that sub forward. Uh, Raskas. Welcome to the adventuring party. I hope you're doing well, Raskas. Make sure to thank brown beard in chat. It's very kind of them to pay that forward. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. And no mercy for the 10 bits, for the bits. Treasure for the quest. Now's a good time to do this, really. Try and get some, like, big damage on these guys, right? I have to be a little bit careful of these, though. They're gonna hit. They're gonna hurt. I could maybe go invis here. That could be a thing. That could definitely be a thing. That could definitely, definitely, definitely be a thing. Don't have ice. Okay. Looks good. P.I. John, thanks for the Prime Gaming sub. I really appreciate it. I was using your Bezos bucks here out of Jeff's pocket into mine. I really appreciate the support. Welcome to the Adventuring Party, my friend. I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. How is this going to go? This next round. Well, I think I'm just going for it and doing as much damage as I possibly can. I'm kind of hoping that these guys don't do anything too scary.
We just gotta do damage. Get him dead. Phantom Gorilla gifted a tier one sub to Doc underscore Robotnik. Wow. Guys, you've been very kind tonight. Thank you so much, Phantom, as well, for gifting a sub. Another sub. Really appreciate it, buddy. Doc Robotnik. Thanks. Uh, make sure to, to thank Phantom in the chat. It's very kind of them, dude. Thank you. Welcome, Doc Robotnik. Hope you're having a great day. Once you join, you can never leave. That's the rules. I didn't write them. That's just the rules. <laughs> I didn't make them. Anthony, for the, thank you so much for the 100 bits. I really appreciate it, dude. Treasure for the quest, my friend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Is it difficult to set this up for local co-op? Um, you'd need... I'd, well, actually, to be honest, if you didn't mind knowing what other people are doing, you could just pass the mouse around if you wanted to. Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do, like, split screen, if that makes sense. But if you just had one computer, you could just literally let people take turns. You could just sit around like this and just, when it gets to the next player, you just let them play. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. There is, um... Oh. Oh. Wow. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Does he need help? Does he is he gonna mess this up? Does he need help again? Oi, you can't bring me in just to do that. Back from retirement. Well, I mean I've I've noticed that he's lost this one a few times now, so. I wouldn't be surprised. Shouty lady needs help. I can't say I'm that surprised. Oh, fa thank you for the follow. Fabulous. I appreciate it. Thank you for following me. Definitely meant to follow me. Not, not him. Right. I'll tell you what, I'm quite liking this, this guy. This, there's a really, it's almost as good as unstable upheaval. Almost. Not quite. Oh, it's pretty good. That's a good impression. Ow. You believe in me? Oh, of course. You need to get this over the line. Oxyflex underscore Nautilus gifted a tier one sub to Nova Chaser oh. underscore SZ. Oxy! Thank you so much. I presume you meant that for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I will make sure that goes straight into my retirement fund. Ah. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Now that's a lot of damage. Look at that hot train. Oh, and Huck. And Cappy as well. Look at this, see? I should be here all the time. Oh, I'm not. Thank you so much, guys. That's very kind. Thank you. Maybe I should just take over. Uh, right, what am I doing with these boots? Uh, something like this. Yeah, there you go. That looks pretty good. There you go. Easy. A little bit worried about this chap, though. Um, we won't worry about him. I mean, it would be quite good to stun everybody next turn. Hit for five. Oh, that's nine, though. Or oh, with the poison. Uh, that's quite a lot. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite a lot, isn't it? I mean, but then I would take... I would take a lot of hits. I don't want to take any hits. You got any cards to burn? Oh, he's got cards to burn. He's all right. Oh, wait, no. I pressed the wrong button. 
Oh, of course. That's fine. That's even better. I meant to do that. That's not my fault. I absolutely meant to do that. Yeah, 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 perfect. Exactly, exactly as I, exactly as I intended. Exactly as I intended. Um... Right. I think, uh, short rest. That's fine. Don't need that anymore. Uh, probably should have used these. That might come back to, uh... That might come back to haunt me. Let's hope not, eh? Let's hope not. Uh, right, you're gonna kill both of these. Well, I hope so. I really, really hope so. Or oh, could short rest? No, I can't short rest. That's a crazy idea. Right, I'll do this one more turn. Seeing as he needs my help. You got to throw our most unstable version last, of unstable upheaval last weekend in my honour. Five enemies in range two of extra buffs and no misses. Oh, oh. That's what I'm talking about. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Right. Now we do this. Oh, we got the refresh. Do we get the refresh? Oh no. Oh no, we got it at the wrong time. Uh, rolling modifier rules. All right, well done. That's not my fault, by the way. Nova Chaser underscore SZ gifted a tier one sub to Cobra underscore 84. No! See, if I was in there instead, I wouldn't miss. I never miss. Thank you, Nova, for subbing for, to me. Great. I really appreciate it. The best gloom tuber. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right, what? Am I done now? I think I'm done. Right. I don't care about their turn. That's his problem. There he is, everybody. Likes to come in and help. He also never draws attack cards. That's true. Very, the game's very easy when you don't need to actually draw cards to do your damage. I think we know where Do No Harm's going, don't we? Um, but honestly, I need to, I need to kind of deal with these guys. This is not looking great right now. We're looking kind of okay, but I don't love it. I might get out of the way here, but then I can't, I guess then I'm like long rest. Then I do no harm and jump in and get this. I guess that's okay.
I don't think I need to... I don't change the mind's weakness up, do I? Here. Yeah. Don't think so. Loss of stuns making it scary? It is a bit, yeah. What I probably should have done is use my mana potion to set up a frigid apparition this turn. I do have stuns here, though. So, like, I could probably kill this and stun this, and that's not too bad. Which means then that I'm going to disarm this, these two... Run away. Leave this guy here. Go here like Phantasmal Killer and attack. It's a good attack. Really good attack. But if I lose Phantasmal Killer, I think that's, that's me done. Like if I do something like this, attack here... Then I think I can probably kill this together in conjunction. Yeah, okay. Ooh, the heal. Heal is not great. Heal is really not great here. Not what I was looking for. They're gonna they're gonna heal this. He's gonna get he's gonna get considerably more life back, potentially. I can bait them a bit closer though. A little bit frustrating there. Right, good. We got the ice for Frigid Apparition next turn, which is like the important thing, really. So I could... No, I don't think I can. I think I just have to do this, right? That sucks. I don't think I have anything else I can really do, though. Immobilize. Yeah, but I just don't... I can't... Then I can't get away, right? Then I'm only moving two away. And I get hit by this. You know what? Next turn, I can do like Empowering Command, Righteous Strength, right? We can get double kill on this guy. Double attack. Do No Harm is definitely going to be for this black imp at the back. There's no question about it in my mind. So next time it's going to be Empowering Command plus maybe like Practical Plans. If I want to get that out. But to be honest, it's probably better to use this on Scales of Justice. Probably. But Frigid Apparition will give me a nice stun next turn wherever I decide to go. Yeah, I'll get it back. I think it's always going to be Scales of Justice. It's always going to be the card I go for there. GG, I, I'm going to get this. Good night, all. Why, I hope so. XL, I hope so. Good night, buddy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, see, this is, this is the obnoxious thing, right? Can I stay alive a little bit? So I can long rest pretty comfortably here. We can do this and do this, right? Um, try and put some damage into this elite. This isn't a great turn. I'll, t I'll say that much. Do I have this? I don't.
Maybe that changes things. Maybe I short rest and just do no harm this guy immediately. Oh, I'm immobilized, so I can't. Ah, right, well, and then I pretty much long rest. I've got nothing I can do here that's impactful enough. I mean, I can probably kill this. Stun this. We kill this. We kill this. Man. This is tight. This is very tight. The only other thing I can do is... I've, I've got Phantasmal Killer, so I could just kill something. I could short rest Phantasmal Killer. Kill this. But then what? Like, my next turn is pretty bad. You know, like, the rest of the turn's not great. But it does just cleanly get rid of something. Very, very cleanly. And then we do no harm this. Then I've literally just got this and this to deal with. Or, 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 we short rest on Sawbones. We do no harm here. Kill this guy. I like to, I don't like having to, like, I don't like to have to attack the Black Imps because of the, the disadvantage. This guy's got more health, right? So you'd think, oh, well, this is the better target. But he's poisoned, so I'm going to get plus one on every attack. And I'm not going to be disadvantaged. So... In terms of, you know, when you've got a couple of curses still in your deck and a couple of blesses, you know, I'm trying to play to my kind of win conditions here. And realistically, it would be much nicer for me to kill this with the do no harm. But also, this gets rid of this quite cleanly. This then allows me to go up here and stun one of these with this and this. Um, potentially allows me to go righteous strength. Actually, it potentially allows me to go... Well, I have to kill this first, don't I? Damn it. There's one guy in the way. I guess I could just try and kill this. And if I don't, I just stun it. Or whatever. Kill this. Try and do this. Then we go... One, two, three. We go we go to tank these. Which is a move. One, two, three. One, two, three. Stun this. Then go in with the... Oh, man. Yeah, I think that's probably the play. I think that's probably the play. All right. Come on, my thief, I believe. Here comes that bless. The five shield draws and imps can be turn ruining as well. Absolutely, they could just destroy me. Okay, not, not the best, not the worst. A target to attack would also be pretty brutal there. Like, do I want them to move much? Or do I want them to stay where they are? That's the next question. Hmm. 
Like, where do I want them? Because I could just move in and I'm tanking the lot. Mana potion ice. I don't. I don't need to right now because I I flipped it. If they're there, that's one, two, three. Like, I'm just thinking, like, I, I mean, for a good prevention is key. In a way, I kind of want these guys to move back. Because then I can jump in there. Prevention is, is key them. Like, I, it's difficult now because I believe I... Did I get rid of my immobilized jumpy jumpy? I did. So, like, I don't have much movement now. Right? In fact, I'm going to have no movement. Okay, this is really going to screw my movement. So just in case I can actually get there with somebody at some point, I think I just stay there. I don't want them to go further into back into the room. I think that's a bit of a that could be that could be the difference between you know my sawbones getting a turn or not getting a turn, right? You shall do no harm. I mean, he's probably pretty much done, but you know. <laughs> I was immobilized. I couldn't move. Right? I was immobilized. I believe so. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah, from the jump away of the previous turn, because we we chose not to long rest. We short rested instead. Okay. We might be playing like kind of a bit cheeky here. Might have to get rid of defensive stance here. I know that seems crazy, but honestly, that might be the best play. <laughs> The only other thing I do here is I short rest, I go early, then I play Empowering Command to get back to Mind Thief cards, which could be really good because that could be double stun here. And then I literally get, I get rid of that and I go here and I stun here. I think that's the play. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that's the play. So we short rests. See, that's bad. But to be honest, a miss is way worse at this point in time. I would really, get, I would love to have hit this. But if I admit, if I don't get this, like if I get this, if I get this, or if I get this, that's pretty damn bad. So I think the mind's weakness is okay to lose here. So you, you hate to see it, but. You hate to see it. Okay, so we go here. Okay, good. Um, create ice. Heal up. Well, that really makes a difference now, but we're getting XP. I think our I think our role in this is done here. The sawbones played well, played very well. Get 
those two cards back. We get rid of defensive stance. We move to here. Stun this. Oh, we're all in, boys. We're all in. <laughs> I love it. I'm a little bit worried about the like initiatives and stuff that we have, so Yeah, there's nothing that I can do here, right? I mean, I could if I could somehow get close, I could I could maybe throw a heal at some point. All right, come on. I'm trying to bait a curse out. I know I've got them. I've got two in there. I already had ice from the bottom, did I? Hmm, well, that's a bit of a mistake. I hope that doesn't hurt me then. Come on! Oh. Like, literally, like, the only enemy that this stuff can happen. I'm, I'm actually really tempted to cheese the game at this point in time. Like, because it's so close. Like, it is so close to whether or not I win or lose, chat. Like, it's unbelievably close. There's a 15 health guy there. I need to kill this thing. I'm doing it. I, it's, it's so close. To a win or a loss. And I'm not losing this one for a third time straight. <laughs> Off the back of that. Just feels rough. Nothing wrong with the bell again. Well, it's technically not strictly in the rules of the game. <laughs> yes! Oh, it's so close. Some nice loot here. Nice. No stun. We're just going at it. I'm going to be attacking it for... I mean, a fair bit. Nine. Twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. Knock, knock. I tell you what, if it goes shield this turn, I'm going to be pissed. Games with Swifty gifted a tier one sub to more underscore galant. Is it you or is the audio a bit choppy tonight? I'm hoping it's just you. <laughs> I haven't got anything wrong on my end. I don't think. Sometimes if you have the um I don't know what it is, the latency thing on, the audio latency sometimes on Twitch, that can make things sound a bit funky sometimes. 
Games with Swifty, thank you so much for gifting a sub. I really appreciate it. To more Gallads, welcome more. Make sure to thank Swifty in the chat. It's incredibly kind of them. Thank you so much, Swifty. I really appreciate the support. The only other thing to do here is to like short rest and do this, but I think I, I can't. I'm going to have to take a hit at some point, right? Big Mind Thief damage. That's a good start. Oh. To the actual wire. By the way, I could probably have tried to have done this. <laughs> Just ignored it. You don't think you can set latency on mobile? I don't know. I know there's like a low latency audio mode that I found that if you turn that on, the pitch bends quite a bit on weird stuff. I found that to be a bit odd sometimes. Um, I mean, I've got a good chance of drawing curses here. Like there's so much going on. See what I mean? Like I'd said earlier about that strengthen being so important in this final room, right? And look at how important it is. Hang on. I'm going to restart this round. Can I restart it? I'm going to restart that round. That was so badly done. I felt like I could have done that better. See how like it's it's ridiculous fighting these guys with disadvantage. It's horrible. So what I should have done here is I should try and get a benefit of this advantaged attack, but I don't think I can. Right? I don't think I can. So I could short rest here. I could use scales of justice. Practical plans. 56. I don't know what this initiative was. I don't think it was very good. I don't think I can do anything about that chat actually. I don't think I can really affect that in any way. Right? I don't think I can actually affect that in any meaningful way. I think I'm just going to miss. Like I don't. I've got strengthen here, but there's no way that I can ensure that I have strengthen for this empowering command because I need to move closer first. I don't think I can do anything about it. Unless I don't empowering command, I short rest, I practical plans and just righteous strength it. And then we go for it next turn after we've cleared a couple of the curses, maybe. If I skip the bottom ranged attack. No, because I miss two attacks on the bounce there, don't I? Because I miss... I miss two two attacks on the bounce. More underscore lad gifted a tier one sub to Kid Comma there. Yeah, because I miss... I miss the set. I miss the um, phantasmal killer default attack, and I miss the, a follow-up attack. So I'm missing two in a row. So I guess I should just clear them. I should just clear them. But I should make it so that I go go like late here. Oh man, this is so confusing. I think I just need to go after. I just take the damage here. Thing is, I don't want this to move away. That's the problem. 
So maybe I honestly just use the top of this and the bottom of this. How weird is that? Yep. Kova underscore 84 gifted a tier 1 sub to a mock 303. Mm. Hey, more Gallard and Kova. Thank you so much for gifting subs. More Gallard, thank you so much for paying that gift forward. That's very, very kind of you. Welcome, Kid Comma. I hope you uh, have thanked more Gallard in chat. That's awesome of them. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the Adventuring Party, Kid Comma. That's very, very kind of you, Matt Gallard. Thank you so much. And Kova as well. Thank you so much for gifting to our mock. Very kind of you as well. The quest continues. I really appreciate it. Amok, make sure to thank Kova and guards and Pogfrogs in chat for those guys. That's really, very kind of you. Thank you so much, guys. You've all been so really generous tonight. It's incredible. Thank you so much. I think we still know what we're doing here, though. So we're just going to try and clear... We're just going to try and clear this mist because we know it's coming. <sighs> this stun is going to be so important on a round though. Like this is... The main thing I'm so worried about now is that this guy just shields up and it's over. Like it's... That would be brutal. So we know this is a pretty good attack. This is a bad one. We also know we've got another bad one coming up next as well. Long rest here. Short rest, frigid apparition, dark frenzy, or brain probably brain leech actually to clear. We can't beat the five, so if he goes on five, he goes on five. Um Problem is now is I've got a one in three shot of hitting frigid apparition. That might be a bit of a problem. <laughs> Ah, uh, that might be a bit of a problem. One in three. See what happens and restart. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, wait. What am I doing then? Then definitely don't want to burn that. I felt like at the moment we're cheesing the game quite a bit at the end here. But also, I mean, come on. <laughs> I felt like the game has really been really hard on me. Perfect. That's what the one that we wanted to lose. Are we just all in now? We're just all in, right? We're just all in. Win or lose. Here we go. Don't shield. I swear to God if you shield. Okay, so this this should this should clear the curse for this. We knew that was coming. Oh my god, dude! Are you are you actually kidding me? The one curse in the deck strengthened. The one curse. Is that it? Did we just lose? We honestly just lost. We get one more turn after this, right? <laughs> this is in this is actually insane. Imagine if I didn't have strength in this situation, chat. It just be like what? What is happening? Ah! 
What is happening? Now I can't miss the gifted attack. I got get minus one with it, though. <sighs> this is it. If it heals on the last turn, we've lost. If it goes on five, I, I tell you what, it hasn't flipped that five in a really long time, chat. A really, really, really long time. <laughs> oh. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> it's not guaranteed. It was not guaranteed. I mean, with the two attacks, possibly, yes. Because I can't draw that miss twice. No. Wow. That was honestly the most stressful I have ever had a scenario. Ever. That was just insanely stressful. Oh my god. I never want to play this scenario ever again, chat. I never want to play against imps again. Ever. Maybe losing that perverse edge was the... Like, maybe I should have got rid of corrupting embrace at that point in time. Like, there was a couple of times when maybe I made a few... Kind of dodgy burn decisions, like with short rests and things. But, oh man. Or I got a little bit unlucky, I guess, with the short... With a short burn. With a short rest burn, but oh god. Oh you bang on the walls, desperately hoping for something to continue fighting against in this exile. Not even close. Tired, First try. <laughs> your vision darkens. Gloomhaven did not want me to win there. That was the game giving me like the middle finger the entire time in that room it was like you think you got this you're doing so well you're doing so well compared to last time oh god no redos absolutely no redos it all went downhill after craig left <laughs> don't tell him that is he his ego is big enough <laughs> Oh. I'm happy, but it's it still doesn't feel great because we really had to like just keep redoing at the end there. Just uh, lying in the grass. Every card mattered at the end there. Every single card, every single attack mattered. We ended up with like one extra attack, I guess, free. But that was oh, just it's nice. I have spared you. The but I hate winning, having to win like that. Your persistence intrigues me. I invite you to break yourself against me. It will be more entertaining than the last time I brought gloom to this world. Ooh. Doom Thunder, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you did well. Hope you're doing well, even. Hope, you, hope you're alright. The community saved Sunday and Deadly Money both retire Craig and get Sunny. They did. You bolt upright and rush back into the crypt. Dead bodies of the cultists litter the floor. Ooh. I am not here anymore. These shells have served their purpose. My roots are now deep, and you will soon encounter my endless power once more. I look forward to the day. If I never had to see you again, that would be too soon. 
<laughs> so Sue is next. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go through it. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Man, I need a break. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Well, halfway, halfway to uh, Bolt already. Look at that. What? Are you kidding me? 1 XP? After all of that? 1 XP? Ah, <sighs> Perk points, though. Let's quickly do this before the game tries to steal them from us in some weird way. Um... Yeah, probably a good time to do this now. We got a lot of advantage, so. But then attacking for five is quite nice. I guess the difference between this and this is fairly similar. It's just like maybe we're going to draw a minus one or a miss, maybe a little bit more regularly. We do get a lot of advantage. This will, this will increase our damage in general. I think it's worth it right now. Then we can maybe get this. Then we can start looking at the shielding ones, maybe. That'll be quite useful. Ooh. Okay. Let's do this perk again. Uh, we'll add one rolling. We'll add a rolling to Sam. Right, city encounter chat. Be nice. Be nice. Time to vote. Let's get a poll going. Right. Which option are we going to go for? Option one or option two? Get your votes in. Okay. As you shop for supplies at the sinking market, your hand instinctively goes for the purse at your waist. It's gone. You quickly scan the crowd and see a small verm... It's, yeah, it's, it's very sad that we had our purse stolen. <laughs> You quickly scan the crowd and see a small vermling darting away from you, heading directly towards a sewer grating. Do we option one, give chase. No one steals from you and gets away with it. Do we take a clear shot at him with a bow before he disappears into the grating? With a bow? Uh, anyone good with a bow? Maybe, maybe not. Smack some oozes. I don't want to. I get flashback from oozing grove, seeing as we played it all. Well, I didn't play it. I had to watch Craig play it, which was even more frustrating, you know. I'm gonna watch somebody else play it for an entire stream that wasn't me. That was yeah. Surely we have a vermling of our own, so can catch the thief. I think so, but are we any good with a bow? Everyone's got option one. Give chase. I guess we're quite fast, right? Aha! The vermling escapes into the sewers, but the mine thief is able to give chase. Catching up as the cut purse enters his nest, they find more wealth than what was lost. Five gold each, flea bitten shawl. Good job, chat. Good one for uh, to have the mine thief still. Who wants flea bitten shawl? But who wants five gold? Um. Um, maybe Sunny. I mean, maybe Shaw might use it. Shaw might actually use it occasionally. I guess it's kind of unlikely, but maybe. Sure. Who even has a bow in that party? I mean, could you make... I mean, is Dark Frenzy, like, bottom a bow? Kinda? I don't know. Secret bow? <laughs> you loved the ad item with Mind Thief when you had Craig and Bree? Never got here. It is good if you're going... If you're doing, like, an all-melee party, it does actually work really nicely on, like, Scoundrel and Mind Thief, because... They usually end up getting kind of screwed over in an all-melee party because their initiatives are so low. But it actually works quite nicely with them. Yeah, it's it's not so good if you have, like, a multi-purpose party, I think. Or if you spread out a little bit. But if you're, like, just going as, like, 
a melee unit marching through the scenario. Yeah, it's good. Let's head to the sewers. We're already in the sewers. Ooh. I mean, fine. We don't have a side quest, though, do we? Because also, it would be nice to retire my thief. Core quest, core quest. Side quest? But it's oozing growth. <laughs> uh, no. Um, okay, yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> I mean, like, we can warm up, right? We're warming up against the oozes. Being ready. <laughs> I'm not. There's no way I'm doing oozing growth. Wait, before we do this, is there anything I need to buy? Um, I think we're pretty good with stuff right now. But is there an enhancement that I really want? I can get up to four. It kind of makes sense to get this. Right? I mean, I'm going to poison them with uh, Prevention is Key anyway. So I don't want to like stack up too many effects. But I guess this works quite nicely with... Well, Muddle, muddle you lose Muddle. That's the thing. Poison's great because it sticks around and so does Wound. So in theory, this could set up a quite a nice... So I could do this, stun everybody. Then on the next turn, they're going to be poisoned and wounded. Wounded. Then I can use... Um, euthanize, right? And then like syringe to stop... Yeah, that's really strong, actually. I'm going to add poison to bloody sore. It's either... Because muddle gets, gets worn off. It's either that or I add the plus attack, right? It's really close. I can get five gold from selling the uh, flea and shawl. John, thank you so much for your Prime Gaming sub. I really appreciate it. Straight out of Jeff's pocket into mine. I really appreciate you using your free Prime Gaming sub here. It means a lot. Thank you so much, buddy. Welcome to the Adventuring Pie. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great time. I hope you're having a great day. Off to sleep. Going to work in the morning. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Take care. See you, Clover. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. You need me to do Oozing Grove. It's unlocked for you right now. I have yet to complete Oozing Grove in in this in digital because I've every single time I've gone in with a party that's uh, like okay ish, and I've played it on Deadly and I've not done it, or I've played it on Hard uh, and not done it. It just feels like a scenario you need a very particular party. Like, I'd say that this party's probably okay at it, except for the fact that I don't have, like, a multi-target stun without jumping in that is really useful on the oozes. Like, you kind of just need to lock the oozes down for a while while you focus on the trees and the imps and the other enemies. Get get rid of the enemies, get, get rid of the imps, get rid of the snakes. Then you can kind of, like, get rid of a one or one tree. Then you can start to push through the scenario and get rid of the second tree and... Then worry about the users. I tend to do that. Because you know that the users are just coming back. So there's no real point in fighting them too much. But I don't really have the ability to do that, unfortunately, with this pie. Like, I need, like, a music note to just lock them down for the entire the entire scenario, basically. Or just a level 9 Spellweaver. Yeah, that too. Just kill everything straight away. Just do it on the first turn. It's fine. Um... <laughs> uh... It's, I could, maybe I should just save up and try and get, like, disarm on this instead. It's 150 gold. It's a lot of gold. But I don't really see what, oh, I'll tell you what I could do. I could put a strength on the bottom of this, right? That's pretty good. It's quite expensive, though. Uh, let's just sell our thing and get it. Let's, let's not worry. Let's just do it. More poison's always good. So let's quickly sell this for five. And let's pick up. Let's pick that up. 
it just gives me another like just easy like more negative conditions just good it just makes it easier for me to euthanize i always feel like i don't quite get the euthanizing right it's some it's an area that i need to improve on with this character for sure um for you is there any particular enhancement i need for you right now i don't think so we got the big one now now it's just a case of getting um an extra movement on this would be great 60 okay maybe we just hold off on that yeah let's hold off on that and you have everything you could pretty much ever want you can bless and i maybe enhance one thing if i really really need to could enhance the extra move here how much is that going to cost me 40 um i should move on here 100 damn it that's what it costs to enhance a level nine card with plus one move okay does not seem like a good good value for money that one chat huh i guess this or maybe increasing this that's 90 what Ah, uh, it's just chuck me on there. Right, okay. Let's do the sewers then, chat. Let's do the sewers. From the center of the silent bridge, a city guard points you to a grating underneath the west side. That's the best way into that hellhole. Good luck. Hmm, thanks. Is my thief close to retirement? Yes. One more side scenario. You've not been using growth often. Tried many times. When you have one, you've either had lightning bolt or angry face. We attack anything in range X card. Yeah, like I've beaten it only once and that was in physical. And that was because uh, I only played it one. I played it twice in physical, lost the first time, won the second time. And we played, I think it was music note crag heart. I think it was the two. Pretty sure it was. Or oh no, was it, it might have been music note. Um, might have been music notes. Play Carol, actually. It takes a bit of climbing, but you eventually make your way down to the grate, which has been twisted and broken over the many years. You light a torch and step inside, following a narrow path up a slight incline. Avoiding the stream of brown liquid running in the opposite direction. Lovely. After a few minutes, the path opens up into a series of branching passageways. You start to look around, deciding on which way to go, when hissing sounds echo through the stonework toward you. You hold fast to your weapons. Snakes? Why did it have to be snakes? Slithering shapes approach. Spill my drink all over me. That was good. <laughs> Music crack is insane CC combo. It is. It is very good. I remember that the only reason we were playing it was because one of my buddies um, couldn't make it uh, that week. So we, there was only two of us. And we just fancied playing. So we just played a side scenario, two player. And we just decided to, to do easy growth. We didn't actually know at the time that it was particularly hard. We just had it as like an optional one. We we're like, should we go do it? Sure. And then after we played it the first time, we we're like, man, that's hard. And then the second time, we actually, uh, we beat it on the second attempt, which was pretty impressive. We were playing it on, I think we were playing it on plus one at the time. But we were we were pretty high level, I think. I can't remember exactly. We might have been low level, which may have been actually easier. Um, okay. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted. Seems reasonable. Gain seven or fewer experience points. Very doable. Less than two health. Okay. Is there anything in particular that I need to bring in that I don't have in this particular scenario? Now, this is another one that's quite long in terms of like stamina. I don't think it's really that much different from the one that we've just played. Except that we're fighting oozes rather than imps. Well, we're actually we're fighting... There's no imps in this one, right? It's just... No. It's just oozes and uh, snakes. And vermlings, I think. So, 
but it's, it's pretty similar in terms of like length like it's, it's one that doesn't feel like it's very long like it doesn't look very long like you're like hey that's easy that's like three rooms that's fine but this like terrain really slows you down and just the board gets like really stuck together and it gets really it's really messy This is definitely one where I'm going to play Research the Cure early because I can definitely play a more of a frontline tank role in this one, I think. So, um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Movement can be a bit harsh on this because of this difficult terrain. So we'll have to be a little bit careful of that, but I think we'll probably be okay. I think that's all good. All right. Being immune to all negative conditions is pretty good here as well because there's a lot of poison and immobilize in this scenario too. So that's going to help a lot. But we have to be very careful now with our stamina with the sword bones because that's a big, that's like a big hit early. You had a scenario where you drew the split five times in a row in the board game insane luck would have lost without it yeah sometimes you want them to split right that's what a lot of people kind of forget it's like oh no they're splitting like a lot of the times actually splitting is kind of okay because you know that they have the standee limit you know that there's like a certain amount of like hexes they won't be able to split at certain times so they just won't have anywhere to split Five shield, completely um, not broken in any way. Legitimate fair. If I take any damage this round, I'm uninstalling the game. Ooh, so close. Ooh. Nice try. Ooh. Nearly. That tickled. Unbelievable. <laughs> Game over. What am I possibly supposed to do? One, two, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uninstall. I said it. Right. You know what time it is. Uh, do I have light? I do not. We should probably go about making that then, really, shouldn't we? Jump. Interesting. <laughs> Why so sad? Oh no, they're looting. And the healing. Foiled. We've been foiled.
Right, only one snake gets to go. I'll take that. Get out of this, snake. Oh. Running damage tally one. The heal's a little bit annoying. I think I'm going to use the hammer here. I don't see why I wouldn't use the hammer here. I'm hoping to refresh it, to be honest. Splitting. And they will... Oh, no. I'll, I'll stun them. I'll stun them. That works out okay. Running damage tally one. Running adding stool key one. Uh, I mean, do I dark frenzy? I guess I dark frenzy this guy. He's a scary. He's a scary one. Uh, do I need to do anything more? I don't think so. I think I have a pretty good turn next turn as well, right? Yeah, I think I do. I think we're pretty good. <clears throat> Alright, here goes. Item refresh! Oh, we pulled it in the wrong order again. This is the problem with advantage. Maybe I should stop attacking with advantage. It's too good. Why target the one I need to stun? It still needs to die. I'm more dangerous to live than the normal one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I know I'm not doing huge amounts of damage to this, so... Also, my plan was to kill these two here, like this. Hopefully. I mean, I've got advantage. They're both poisoned. Got a good chance. There you go. That was sort of more, more of the reason there. He's going to try and target two here, huh? Let's go here then. Yeah, really, like, you just... You know you need to kill stuff. So, yeah, I'm stunning it this round, but... Ultimately, the, the elite snakes can be quite scary, so I just want to try and get them dead. Oh, we did a pretty good job of it there. Um... Ultimately, I'm probably going to do this and this. Gives me a double heal, maybe. At the end of this turn. Yeah, we'll just do this and this. Um... Um, so let's 
kill uh, this one. Even though I'm like, technically this is like, oh, well, I'd lose my advantage. I think it's worth trying to kill the snake. So that's why I'm going to attack that. Oh, actually, no, no, no. I'm, I'm doing the, the... There's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm doing Empowering Command to kill that one. No, that's why I don't want to do that. Uh, so it's, it is these two. To be honest, I may as well use my stun powder too. That's a pretty... That's a pretty nasty attack right there. You don't want to be on the other end of that. That's for sure. Okay, then we powering command onto this. Kill this snake. Stop this guy. Clean. Uh, do I need to get any cards back now? Now is like the kind of time I should be thinking. Do I need cards back to finish any of these guys off? Maybe. I don't think I'm doing too much here, am I? Next still looks pretty rubbish there. I probably should have used some cards here on the Mind Thief, to be honest. I mean, I've still got, what, practical plans? I can just hit something for five? That's fine. Let's not worry about it. Use a minor potion on the sun, have two turns, perhaps. Yeah, that might be a good idea on, the, on this next one. I think I've got one good turn here, right? Which is just like this, and this is fine. And then I've got Dazzling Charge to heal off the damage and some and a Mana Potion to get something else. I like that. Uh, this is probably just going to be go here, go invisible. Honestly, and I just think I want to go kind of late to throw heals. Shield one. This guy is healing. But I can steal the loot away from him. <laughs> uh, I want to do a melee attack, actually, so I can get my uh, my weakness bonus here. I think I'll go here. I'll steal the loot away from him. Not that I particularly need to go invisible there, either. Ooh... Now that's a lot of damage. Nice. <laughs> now that's a lot of damage. Now that's a lot of damage. I guess I might just want to hit it. Nothing to lose by doing that. I'm, I'm on a long rest next turn, right? I'm on a long rest this turn with my Mind Thief. I'm on a long rest maybe next turn, I think, with my Sawbones. So I just need something to deal with the snake. And to kind of put me in a good position next round. I think. That's all we need, right? About as good as you can do for the first room. It is. Yeah, I mean, I'm very happy with the way that, that turned out. Very happy indeed. We didn't use too many resources either. I guess we've used the stun hammer, which is, you know, that is a good thing. So we we definitely use that. But hopefully we can flip that item refresh and get that back. That is what I'm hoping out. I'm holding out hope for. Just in case of how we deal with this one, really. Let them come late and then just hit them. 
I really want to keep the move 5 for movement. My practical plans for movement is actually really good for me. Oh, maybe just use this. I mean, it's a, it's a good attack. And if we go late-ish, we're kind of just going to hope that it's, it's going late. Remove all of those negative conditions that you are immune from. Good spot to sit. Nine. So we go. So may as well keep the mind's weakness up for this one. I think it allows us to play fast and aggressive, which is what I like to do. So don't really care about going late. Right. Let's hope for initiative before 57, shall we? Oh, there we go. Although we are going to get hit here now. I guess it doesn't matter though because we're long resting so we can heal off the poison that we're going to get here. Just kind of need to keep moving here. Use my boots because I know that I'm going to be long resting next turn anyway. So may as well just get that extra spot forward. Get rid of hostile takeover. Not particularly a card that I love in this scenario. And precaution is not a bad card in this scenario. So I might just keep that in. But the thing is with this character is he's so combo heavy. But losing one card can just throw everything off. So it's like, if I don't lose precaution, like I'm either losing, I'm losing curative mixture, which might be okay to lose a heal. Maybe it won't matter too much because I've got a decent heal here. But that's like the difference, right? That is really what kind of uh, the difference these things can make I think I'm probably going to go invis here maybe I'll use my uh, my cloak to go invis instead If oozes are splitting, it's not like I could get to them and really stop them from splitting anyway, so... Why not? Why not just uh, let it happen, you know? We're going to have to get some cards back this round, so... I don't mind doing this and just chucking a heal... On myself... Okay, so, me, door, let's see what we can get, one, two, are they splitting? No, that's good, these guys aren't jumping either, I could go forward one space, that will allow this one to go one, two, three, four, I guess this is better to secure this one space in front for the Sunkeeper next round, so I don't think I'll move here. Kill the snake behind. Kill me. Get some damage in on these two guys at the front. There's a vermling in this room usually, right? There they are. What are you doing? Moving and attacking. That's fine. Are you playing Gloomhaven late at night? Of course. It's a work event. <laughs> I mean, I, you have to explain why these vermlings are down here, though. I don't really get, like, oozes and vermlings and snakes. I mean, I get the... Kind of get the snakes. This seems kind of bizarre to me, though. 
A strange meeting in the sewers. They're passing by. <laughs> they just uh, happen to be passing by at the time. We're like, oh. Are you guys having a fight? We'll join in. We love a good fight. I guess I'm going to try and hold hold the fort here a little bit. Ooh. One, two, three, four. Ooh, who's this a spleen? I don't think it matters too much, though, to be honest, at this point in time. That arranged attack, though. One, two. Oh, is it doing the weird bug thing again? One, two. Oh, it's because I'm in a defensive stance. I need four to get there. Yeah, that's a thing. Are they moving? Is that range? Three. I think they're going to be able to get me anyway, right? If I go there or there. Oh, maybe not all of them. But the problem is then is what do I do with the mind thief? I mean, I... I really don't, I don't have my boots already. Do I not have boots on mind thief? Did I use them? Yeah, I did. That's only a small attack. I got all my armor. I'm sure it'll be fine. Three groups of Gloomhaven hooligans meeting for a fight and you rudely interrupted them. Maybe it was like Fight Club. We interrupted Gloomhaven Fight Club in the sewers. I was going to say, if you wanted to go to that hex, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much. One more snake down. Just thinking if I should try and do like a phantasmal killer next round or something. Or if I should run in Prevention is Key and just start euthanizing these oozes. That's a sentence and a half. Right. That could be a good idea, though. Run in. Get to here. Could be very, very strong. Like, essentially, almost have two dead oozes. Within... A few quick rounds. I'm going to go for it. They're basically rats. So it makes sense to me that they are in the sewers. I guess so. I mean, they are vermilings, right? They are vermilings. But I've always seen them more as like forest. Like forest vermilings, right? They're not like street smart vermilings. They're up in the woods. Look, he's got a little bow and arrow quite punky 
They're like the Lost Boys, right? What are you doing in the sewers? <laughs> it could be Master Splinter. This would be a pretty nice disarm here, I think. You got one extra ruse here. If that's Splinter, then the oozes are the turtles. Really? <laughs> wow. They really let themselves go, huh? And downhill fast. Um, oh, I do have that, which is quite nice. I think I'm just going to go like this and go to there, maybe. Then I can use Empowering Command next turn. That would be good. That'd be real good. Thirty-two. Uh, that's okay. Um. No, wrong time. Can call that now. Okay, hammer blow this guy here. Get the plus one. Ooh, times two even better. Yeah. These guys are doing a little bit of an annoying attack here, which is a little bit frustrating. Can I get over there? Oh, I'm going to need to use my moon earring. I believe in you, Zor. You got this. Lenuzo, Donatuzo, Raffioso, Michael Ozilio. Zillo? Uzilo. Uzilo. I'm not good with uh, ooze names. I mean, that could have been nicer. Oh, crap. I needed to use this, didn't I? Oh, shoot. I really needed to do that. Um... Okie dokie.
may have made a slight tactical error. Uh, I guess I short rest. Ugh. If I, I could lose a really important card here, then I can't do anything. Maybe I just kind of run away on this one. Maybe I just run away on this one. Yeah, I think it's fine. I just run away. Just didn't seem to time that one very well. It's okay, though. 23. Definitely using the boots. Oh, actually, where am I? He's going to attack me anyway. I guess I could give myself plus 10, then he attacks you instead. That's the reason. That's better. That's better. Oh, I I had this up again. Okay, slight change then. I didn't realize that I had um, I had dark up still. That's actually really good. Inadvertently did really good thing there, chat. This is the one where you drew the split five times, three splits plus two minis combo wasn't fun at all. Two minis is a is a scenario I think this this one can struggle a little bit. I think we played this scenario with a two minis in our party on the community save. We did it, but it was yeah, it was particularly um particularly nasty. I don't know what I've done differently this time, but somehow I've I've done it. <laughs> Just not complain. Ooh, double phantasmal killer. That's been really, really good. What? What? Hang on, it said 30... What? What the... Devs? Was it me or did it say something completely different up here when I selected those cards? I swear it said 35. Or was I just going mad, chat? Or am I just going insane? Because I was like, oh, I've done something slightly different. I thought I had. Maybe I'm just going mad. I, c I couldn't have. I only have two cards. I have no idea what happened there. I'm just going to... Yeah, let's blame it on the devs. It's their fault. It's not my fault. It's their fault. Very nice. Right, now you should attack... It's that stupid bug again, right? It's that stupid bug. Where even when you use the boots, for some reason the enemy still focus you on your initial initiative. I ain't on no 25. 
Ah! Right, restarting the round again. That's like... That bug's been in the game for a long time, too. <laughs> Ain't no cheat in the snake, he knows. <laughs> uh, apparently, he's real smart. I can get around it, but I'm just not very happy about the way I have to get around it, but... Yeah, I mean, I could get around it. Horse fan, definitely. But it's just, it's just, I was not necessarily like, it was just awkward that I had to play all of my cards around to do that, right? Like, I shouldn't have to. Should just be able to use my items. Um. Oh. Oh, I hate the way this does this. This isn't in my hand. Don't show like you're in my hand when you're not in my hand. I just wasted that now. I guess I'm using both stamina potions then, hey? Stuff like that is like really annoying. Like you press that to go, right, well, I want to see everything. And it show. it looks like it's in my hand. It's not. Okay. Well, it's 12 gold. That's pretty good. Good. Well, that ooze is dead. Don't want to get any cards back here. I feel like I just want to move on to that spot, right? Most likely. Probably stun this. Do I have my boots still? No. I think I should probably get some cards back then. This feels like the kind of room that's good to get some cards back. I definitely want to play... Um, some kind of stun, I think. And maybe just move up and shield. Seems pretty reasonable. Alright, forget about ooze about these vermilings what bug technically uses on a bug but you support that effort not the oozes i mean sure they can remove them from the game if they like i'm sure a lot of people will be very happy about This is a bit awkward. Oh, no, I can send something there, right? That's fine. Hmm, ranged attack, eh? 
ranged attack, eh? Not really what I was looking for there. To be perfectly honest. We'll heal up though. I guess just finish it off. This is a bit unfortunate that we missed that. Stuns. Six more gold. No, you're supposed to miss here. That's how this works. Sneaky little vermlings. They're definitely the easiest enemies in this particular scenario, but still kind of like frustrating to play against, right? Probably have to short rest here, I think, which is a bit sucky. I'll get rid of Phantasmal Killer because I have no intention of really playing it. Oh, that's a that's a pretty big loss. That's a pretty big loss. Oh. And they're only looting? Oh, it feels doubly bad. Damn it. Don't you just hate it when that happens, chat? Nicely done. We are going to lose that one pile of loot. I guess it was kind of destined that we would probably lose at least one there. But we're not doing too bad in this scenario. I think we're doing like fairly good. This is a really tough room though. So this is one of those kind of scenarios where the first two rooms are relatively straightforward. But they kind of slowly bleed your resources. Like if you don't play particularly well... We'll kind of lose a card here, lose a card there, and uh, could end up in this room with, like, a lot less resources. I really, really want to flip the Warhammer again, like, so badly. Um, I'm 
Mm, pretty close to getting that now. Nice. Crack has always done so much work for you in the final room of this scenario. Yeah, that's true. I've pretty much always had Crack card when I've been in this scenario too. It is very, very good at... Uh, at dealing with... Uh, just like making sure that all the oozes get into this middle section where all the difficult terrain is. And then you don't really have to worry about them again. For sure. Really good strat. Rock Slide is an insane card. I mean, it, it really is. Like, in terms of power level, Rock Slide is... Rock Slide is one of those cards that is powerful, but it's, like, the right kind of powerful. It does something unique. It is a way to interact with the scenario in a slightly different way. So, without you having to, like, outrightly just deal damage all the time. Like, it mixes up the variety a little bit. Like, there's other things you can do to deal with enemies. It's kind of like control, but not as blatant as just chucking stun or disarm or immobilize on stuff, right? It, it's it's doing that kind of effect while doing damage, influencing the enemies and their positioning and stuff. It's just really good um, mechanic. Maybe a little bit too strong, you could argue. But I think in terms of like the balance level of general things in Gloomhaven, I think it's probably just a little bit on the more powerful side, but it's not like some other crazy cards that are like just stupid. I think it's it's powerful in the right player's hands, which is what I like. It rewards forward thinking, uh, looking at the board in a slightly different way. It really rewards you as a player, which is what I think a good card should do and a good ability in Gloomhaven should do. Shouldn't. Just be, oh, I'm going to attack everything. Like, like for example, Inferno, it's like, yeah, it's a super powerful card. But it's like an easy card to play. You just literally play it. Like, you don't have... There's no real setup that goes into it, apart from maybe making fire. <laughs> like, there's no massive, big kind of, like, ooh, big brain play that you're working on, right? Whereas, you make a good rock slide, stop all the enemies from moving, you feel good. You feel clever. I think I'm kind of be on a short rest here. A little bit of a problem in this scenario is that if I can go forward and go invis, which is fine, and then long rest, that's that's good. But it will ultimately make um it will ultimately make it so that the oozes have more chances to spawn, which is maybe something to think about. Navigating through the passageways, you find yourself in a large open room with a cistern at the center. Around the cistern stand a group of vermlings who look up and snarl in your direction. This must be the cause of the poisoned water. Stop poisoning the water supply. Somebody's poisoned the water hole. What are they doing? A ranged attack. But they're going to struggle to move anywhere, really. 
You splitting? No, they're moving, which is good. You want them to move towards you slowly. Just want a couple of turns of movement. Well, I'm going invisible. I do have the mine's weakness up, so... Could just hit something. I mean, hit something or don't hit something. I think I'll take hit something. Yep. <laughs> Not bad. Although that's the kind of thing that I want on the uh, the oozes, really. Got to try and work out where I'm going to get this good prevention is key, you know? Not quite there, I don't think. Got to hope that the oozes kind of put themselves out of action here a little bit. I'm sure they will. I think I just need to play support saw bones for a little bit. Just for another turn. Range five. I didn't count that out, but that's kind of lucky. Right, too many too many splits here, and that can be a big problem. So we, I do have to definitely keep an awareness of that. I don't think I can. I completely ignore that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we go down to seven. So we should keep the mind's weakness up still. And that's the thing we didn't want to see. I mean, we, we can we can deal with it. Like, there's... We have uh, things we can do. We have a lot of damage. We have a lot of cards. We're in good shape. But it's... It would have been nice for them to move one more time. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it begins. We should be able to get these vermlings down pretty damn quick, though. Hey, nosy boy. Nosy boy. First time you've been able to see my stream live. Thanks for these plays. No problem, dude. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Welcome. Good to have you here. So... What can I do here? I guess we just let them split. I know that I haven't got... I've only got like one turn here and it's not a... Wow, I haven't even got one turn. This is throwing me again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get caught out by this so much. This is definitely not in my hand. So I'm I'm short resting or long resting. And I really, realistically, I should long rest because I've got too many important cards, so. It's not too bad fighting these um 
these oozes though to be honest like the regular ones because we have phantasmal killer we have euthanized like we have ways to kill oozes quite quickly so yeah it's a little bit scary but honestly it's not too bad like one more split and then they do like some big ranged attack might be a bit more scary but with our permanent shield three and our immunity to poison means that we're always going to have shield three I don't think we're going to be pretty good. Um, in terms of things to get rid of here, it would be really nice to just do like a couple of really like big attacks to finish off. Like I still could finish this off, finish this off, finish like do a lot of damage to this maybe. That could be good. This will be gone. So think about that a little bit. Need my jump to get to the back of the room for sure. Need strengthen. Do I need shared nightmare? Probably not. Shared Nightmare is like one of those cards that I'm always like excited to get when I get it when I level up with the Mind Thief. But when I actually start playing, I just find myself falling into my old loops of just Reverse Edge, Frigid Apparition, Corrupting Embrace, you know, Dark Frenzy. Like it's not... It feels like you don't ever really use the top in a really meaningful way, except occasionally when uh, there's like enemies that are so very far away and hard to get to. But one of the good things about the Mind Thief is that they're so mobile and agile. You can just kind of get around. So you don't really often have that problem. It's kind of a, it's kind of a weird one. The idea here is to hopefully kill this. Then just attack this. Attack this. Um, that's pretty good. Nice against Retaliate. True. That's true. It does give you a viable attack option with that. For sure. You going to split again on me? No, nope, not going to move though. Okay, let's go for you. To be honest, I'd probably go for the poison play here. The thing is, though, is if I don't kill this, then it kind of makes more sense for me to kill to kill this with the second attack. I'll be a little bit worried about these attacks, though, coming in. What's the range on this? Three. One, two, three. Oh, we're good. We're good. I'll be a little bit worried about this guy, though. We're going to get double attacked here. All right, pray for Mind Thief. Success. Um, right. So now we're getting into a good place, though, with these guys at the back wow. for sure. Wow. So, like, the elites can't split anymore, right? They're, they're kind of stuck in there, which is nice. Um, we do In an ideal world, it would be nice if they could start getting a bit closer to this. Like, it would be nice if we got, like, somebody in here on the chest. And then we could jump into the back here. But these elites can't spawn anymore, which is nice. I think I probably want to keep do no harm just to maybe kill an elite like if I needed to. Hmm. But I need to hold back the plane. I guess bloody saw. It's either bloody saw or prevention is key. I guess bloody saw because we have already used the warhammer. We're going to hopefully get it back but 
I'm sure we can do... We can do better. Right, so this is the turn I have to consider jumping in, really. I do really need to consider jumping in. I'm hopeful that we can finish these guys off here. I'll be a six with strength then. Might not be good enough, actually. Maybe I'll, I'll play it uh, safe and I'll go in this. And the next turn I can do something like this. Yeah. Um... I can stun something. Is that regular? I can go in and maybe... I could go in and I could stun these two with this this way. And then I could jump in there. That's fine. I can stun this, these. And the only things that can act is this, this, and this. That seems pretty reasonable to me. All right. Even better. They're healing. I mean, that does get rid of the poison that I'm about to put on them, but... I actually don't mind that because they're going to move a little bit closer, potentially, if they can. That's going to open some gaps. I don't mind that at all, actually. Right. Uh, actually, no. Let's go on this guy. Let's hope we draw the times two. Yeah, we didn't get it. That's okay, though. It was a good effort. So in a weird way, do I actually just want to run up here and just do a move two and disarm these two? I mean, that's probably the better play <laughs> in a weird way here. Because these guys are just going to heal off the poison anyway. But it does stop them from gaining health back, which is something. Because at the moment, they're all going to go back up to full health. Which is... It's not nothing. Essentially, it would be two, four... I'd be maybe very like six heal. I could get the chest. Also something I could do. Or I prevent potentially... Just an attack of two. Yeah, I, I guess this this is better, right? I think this is better. Prevents them from healing for six. So it's basically like doing six damage, almost. I don't really want the elites to heal either, I guess. So... What do we get? Scroll of power design. That's actually pretty, pretty nuts. That's a great random item to get. That's a really good random item to get. Happy with that. Almost as good as scroll of stamina. Almost. Not quite. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Um... Really gonna miss that, uh... Really, really gonna miss that stun hammer. What kind of range is that? Max range. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so not having the hammer is pretty big here. Because I could do something. I mean, I can go in invis here, which is quite nice. So if I wanted to do something um, a bit kind of cute, I can just go invis at the end of it. So if I wanted to euthanize something, now's not a bad time to do it. I feel like a split is probably coming. You know, you get that feeling. I'm getting that feeling right now. I'm getting that feeling, chat. That's a big loss. I guess we'll have to get rid of it. Hey, Sinertia. Welcome, Raiders. Hope you're doing well. How's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a great stream, bud. Uh, so we're going to stun here. I think we just have to kind of go for the double stun because I just get that feeling. I get that sinking feeling that there is something really scary coming right now. Ooh, that Gloomhaven sixth sense chat. Ah, oh. huge brain. Where do I post my polls in Twitch? It usually should just, should just come up in chat when we're doing like polls for events and things. I can see the code. <laughs> I'm starting to believe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they are still going to split somewhat. Trying to think, like, which is a good one to stun, like, uh, this one, maybe this one. Ah, frustrating. Um, these guys are just looting, right? Yeah, so I don't have to. I don't have to worry about anything really. This round, it's nice. And bullet time. Where is my third eye? <laughs> um. So honestly, I think I just stunned this elite up. Don't do too much more. We stun this, stun this. They're still going to spawn like a good amount, but it's going to be these guys at the back. That guy's going to split first. He's who's number one. So we'll get him because he's who's number one, so he will split first. Good thing Gloomhaven Digital honors the standee limits. Yes. Funny story. It didn't for a while. In Guildmaster, they decided to take it away. And, uh, yeah. That was kind of interesting. Oh, 
Okay, I, I've stopped like a decent amount of it, but I mean the scary, scary ones, but obviously I couldn't stop it all. There's so many of them. So many uses. This is the first time actually on this particular scenario I've got to this room and the oozes have split. Like, several times. Like, I've never got to standee limit before. I've always managed to kind of just play it in a pretty good way to not have to worry about that. This is the first time that's ever really... It's ever gotten to this point, which is quite scary right now. There's a lot of things that I'm facing down. I really need to do like a good attack here and go invis and then like prevention is key next turn or something just to try and get some uh, some of their health down. I don't have a good good initiative here at all, which is really worrying me. I mean, I guess they don't often go before that, but they can sometimes. Really, I want to go kill this elite, right? With this, I think. That's really the play right here. And let Sun just go and deal with these guys. Because Sun's got such a high shield. She should be fine. Just nine more splits in a row and I'm colder than true. Well, with shield three, permanent shield three, that does feel like it's, you know, maybe more doable. Right. I need to finish these guys off. Seven. Mm, it's encouraging me here to get rid of the mind's weakness but also i'm thinking do i want to go fast this is another thing you can consider i do usually do it whenever it's a it will give me a complete round but here i'm thinking do i need to just have that buff like just to be able to go fast because playing the mind's weakness is a turn you know it is a, a pretty relevant turn so it would be quite nice for me next turn to be able to do like phantasmal killer Corrupting Embrace, hopefully kill this and this. Or just use it with like Dark Frenzy, for example. Do a big hit on this. I'll tell you what, losing Frigid Apparition early in the scenario was actually pretty rough. Um, oh, geez. All right, well, that's put me in a bad, bad spot. Okay. Yeah, that really sucks. That was always the risk I was running, though. Shield is good, but 10 attack 5s is still daunting. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to win us completely. We're not, like, safe. I think it does go quite a long way, though. We 
can start working on this tail end, maybe. Just thinking, like, do I want to start getting... Like, into a slightly different position. These are all range 2, right? So I just need to kind of get out of that range 2. Or at least I think I'm going to put the Sunkeeper into the range 2. I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet. These guys have got range 3. I might just... I could just go in this, though, couldn't I, too? That's fine. I mean, is this a good spot for me to be in? I feel like it's not bad. Now that there's nothing in it, they could spawn into it, so... I'll stay here. Ooh. It's not over the line yet, chat. It's not in the bag yet. I feel like there's still plenty of things that could go wrong here. Yeah, boy. A little bit spicy. Hmm. Just a little bit. Thing is, if I move back here... I have to move forward again. I really just do not want to do that. These guys are all disarmed, right? Disarmed, 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 disarmed. So it's just these two anyway. So going here would mean that I take one more attack, which is not really great. Um, but as it stands, they're going to push me away anyway. So I guess the thing is, this guy is going to push me. That I have to be conscious of. So he could push me this way. I don't think that really matters. If he pushes me this way, it matters because then I get an extra attack against me. That round. So. I think I drop back and get this loot. <laughs> so I think I just get the loot. And take my beatings. There's a big ouch. And the name of the game now, really, is almost to actually just protect um, and get everybody down low to protect the number of standees. Because in a situation like this, I could just start picking things off one by one, which I which I might I may do. I mean, I have, I have to eventually, right? But also, I have to be conscious that actually just getting generally getting the figures down is going to be good. So. You know, now is the kind of time to do do some crazy stuff. Now's the time to pull something like this out of the bag. See if I can attack these guys for four. Strengthen. Hopefully I can I can pull something good. Um You know, hammer blow. Try and kill this. A lot of stuff's not gonna drop loot as well, so it's not really gonna block stuff. Which is a little bit of a problem. So they are moving, but they can barely move in this scenario, to be honest. So that doesn't bother me too much. Go plus 10 on that. So it'll make sure that we can stay in this the whole time. Um, they have some big range here. This is going to hurt. I've got a healing potion, though. I can make this guy attack at disadvantage, so I think I'll do that. We've got an extra shield up, though. Potentially some big, big beats incoming, though. Yeah. 
This guy's just hanging out. <laughs> I, I I was really hoping for an opportunity to, to kill him. I didn't get it. So now they've bunched again. So I don't really know how I feel about that. A lot of damage. Okay. We're going to try and do some big damage here. I need it. Nice. There you go. That was pretty good. Right. Split. Please, for the love of God, split. <laughs> I really need them to split. Nice. The chances are the Mind Thief isn't going to take anything here, so I can kind of just chill there. I really need to just take this spot. Oh, I could really do with my long spear back right now. Yeah, a split here would be fantastic. How many standees do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'd only get one new ooze. It would be from the lowest alive ooze, which would be this one. That would go down to eight, seven, six. That would be another six. That's pretty good. Also, this vermiline just really needs to leave me alone. Just please, can you just stop? <laughs> it's just, it's getting annoying now. Dude, please leave me alone. <laughs> yeah number one's gonna die here then it's gonna go to i guess number four is the next one i think unless this one's no yeah it's number four we don't have a two or a three so a short rest here another hold back the pain or I could go syringe hamstring. I mean, it's it's either I long rest or short. I either I long or short, and I guess I have to short. But I'm just trying to figure out like what's the worst card for me to lose here. That feels pretty bad, but prevention is key. Is also really important here, but it doesn't do anything. All right, I guess we're all in. <sighs> Gotta be exciting. Oh, come on, split. This is a little bit scary.
I guess I could come down here and just start attacking this, couldn't I? I just, I wanted to come up here and deal with this. Um, but without the invis, I don't think I can safely do it. I have Phantasmal Killer up, so it's just be a, it'd be a, a really boring attack too. The other thing I was going to do is start working on these here, you see, but this guy's going to target me. And I'm on one health. That is not cool. The only way I can change that is if I move, which I don't really want to do, because I'm going to be doing some really good damage to these guys here. But I am going to be taking a lot of damage here on the sword bones, aren't I? Yeah, this is really awkward. I could just burn the top of Brain Leech, I suppose. I mean, how bad is that right now? That would put me down... That would put me down quite a few cards. I think I still need to play it more methodical than that. I'm going to play it safe. Maybe not the best, best play. But I need to keep my Mind Thief alive, right? So, question. Or thought here. Do I actually not use advantage here as a ploy to try and draw my plus zero? To refresh my cards. Because if I go with advantage, it's very unlikely that I draw it. I'd have to draw it in conjunction with the minus one, the minus two, or the miss. So it might be kind of quite cute here to not use the goggles. To then get the item back, to then go invisible. Like... It's not bad. Use goggles, lots of attacks coming in. But the thing is, is that if I do, if I use goggles and I don't flip that, I think I'm like in a really bad shape anyway. Right? I think I'm going to be taking so much. I think I need to make a play to try and hit that card. I'm going to draw three. One thousand IQ play. Yeah, I mean, I... I Honestly, I... I, I mean, may, I can always restart if this misses right before I finish my turn, so... Never doubt me. <laughs> First try. <laughs> wow. Big smarts. I mean, our Sun Keeper is not looking great, though. Let's let's be real. But she's surviving. She's hanging on in there. It's all good. It's all good. Right? Um... Yeah, we really need them to split right now. <laughs> like, um, please, please split. I could get the Mind Thief cards back, but we're going to have to long rest here probably anyway. I mean, I have Phantasmal Killer up, so maybe I should just short rest and just let whatever happens happen. Like, we are, we are close to either winning or losing this scenario. We are, like, it's on a knife edge right now. We need some splits from these guys. We need them to just sort of play ball. 
for a little bit. Like, don't do anything too silly. This guy should die. These guys will go down really low. But I am, I am on the verge of losing this, for sure. How many monster behavior cards do they have? Uh, seven? Was it seven? Eight. There you go, eight. Two of them are splits. One of them is a heal. So that is, you know, a decent, nearly half the deck are cards that I don't mind seeing. The heal one would probably be the worst one to heat see. Because that would just sort of just stall this ball out and not really do a lot here. Come on, dude. Can you help me out? Could you help me out? They're moving four? Jesus. Attack three into shield four. Oh, damn it. Exactly the amount to kill this guy. That was impressive. a lot of damage. Ah! <laughs> survived. Actually survived. Can't lose now.
Unbelievable. It's happening. Oh. This one's just like the last one. Feels like the game is just baiting me so hard right now. <sighs> They've got a split next turn, right? It's got to be a split. And that would be really bad right now because we've just kind of got them low. We've just about got them low now. This guy would die. This one would go to six, five, four. Wouldn't be too bad. This is a really bad split. So we have to cover this split. If any of these three, these four split, it's annoying, but not terrible. But this is a really bad split. Yeah, split or heal incoming, definitely. So I have a couple of things I can do. So I could go for the do no harm play, which is what we were kind of like angling for anyway, to go here to just kill this. Then I could go and kill this with the Mind Thief. That's two things down. This thing should die. This will take damage. This will take damage. Split, split. We get two more guys to deal with. Problem with that though is that then I'm kind of a little bit low on cards on the Sawbones. You know, we're basically saying we're done on the Sawbones, but maybe that's fine. Other thing I could do is if they do split here, is I could just get you to attack here, you to attack there. I could get you to move here, block. I don't think that's very strong, actually. All right, we have. To, I think we have to kill the elite this turn. That's annoying, but I think it's. I think we just have to. Then we can go here and we can kill this, or actually we can kill the one with a little bit more health. That's fine. Sunkeeper can kind of do do her thing, and not do a lot here. There it is. You just can't trust them. You just can't trust them. So I should be able to block this split as well, actually, thinking about it. Boy, has Phantasmal Killer been an MVP this scenario. Get rid of it. I don't want to have to think about it anymore. Yeah, blocking that big split was a big was a big kind of deal here. <laughs> sort of keep doing damage to this guy. I think the mind thief's going to take this hit. That's a bit of a problem. But I have to, I feel like I have to block the split. Because it's going to be range three, three health. If that happens to the Mind Thief, that's really bad. But then it's basically I'm allowing a split. But this is going to die. This is going to go down to six, five. Uh, it's going to go down to four. It's going to be two enemies on four. That's doable, right? Two enemies on four. Two enemies on five. My mind thief should eat that for breakfast. Really. I just, I don't think that I can face a, an attack here. I'm strengthened too. So my next turn, potentially or like a short rest on the mind thief, could be really impactful. We could easily finish off like two. Yeah, I think I, I think I can't risk my mind thief here. I'm kind of ignoring this guy, but he, he, he needs to be killed. He's a very real threat. 
I really wish I'd put a wound on him somewhere. What? Huh? I didn't think I was exhausted there. Bit strange. I didn't think I was exhausted there, right? If the split heals, we can go before the heal, though. So we can kill, like, mostly. This guy's real pain. Real, real pain. I really want to do Perverse Edge, Corrupting Embrace next turn. That's all I want to do. You know, Phantasmal Killer does stuff, so... It's okay. Doesn't... That doesn't do... That doesn't do anything. I think we go to try and kill this this turn. I think we do. Yep. Okay. So if I make dark, I can phantasmal killer one of these guys next round. Which sounds pretty good to me. to not miss with this gifted attack as well, I think. Go on, get in. This, maybe? Okay, 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 okay. Woo! Let's get in spooky! Minus, miss, Nice. Minus two. Nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. So we know we have this. Don't have the boots for it, though. But potentially I could move them in. And I could go and stun something else. That would be super good. So I can go stun something. Potentially this. If, if they split. Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. Oh, yes. Okay. There it is. Could be the win, boys. Can you Phantasmal with Spear? No. Because it changes it from an attack to a kill. That was yeah that was huge that that could be it right there it is tempting in a way to just actually just attack
Yeah, maybe I just attack him like this now. Actually, maybe better. Because if I can get two nice little attacks off here, because I if I kill this, it doesn't really solve this problem, right? Or is it going to take two damage this turn anyway? There it is. Is that the win? I think that's the round. Oh, beautiful sight. Oh, of course, he's stunned. No, <laughs> we lose. <laughs> Actually lose. <laughs> oh, boy. What a scenario, eh? What a scenario. Pick up that gold. Well tanked. Round 27. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't say I'd do it fast. Not quite the last round. I think we had a little bit more in us, but also if we took any damage, there's a good chance we'd have to burn a card and then it would be over at that point. So even though we technically had a few more cards to play, whether or not we'd ever get to play them is is the thing. Nice. Investigating further, you find no poisons of any kind on the corpses. Is it possible these vermin were not the cause and just living here away from the eyes of the guard? At the back of the room, large cracks are present in the wall, displaying a passage deeper into the deck. I don't know about this next one in this chain, though. And if you had some way to breathe underwater, you may even be able to enter the cistern and find the source that way. No, thank you. That's another incredibly hard scenario. Allow none of your allies to become exhausted somehow. Sure. We did it. Wow. I am very happy with that. It was looking... It was looking dodgy for a while there, chat. It was looking nervous. It was that... Those couple of rounds where they just seemed to keep attacking. Didn't seem to want to just, like, split and play nice. They also didn't play their move and heal card at all in the final... I want to say they didn't play it for, like, the final 10 rounds or so, right? 8 to 10 rounds. Really didn't. Fire Teeth, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Welcome in. 27 rounds and some keeper can't even get 10 XP. <laughs> That's just the life of playing a Sun Keeper. You take damage as your XP, right? You're doing well on this, though. Inadvertently, this has actually been a very successful, um, very successful personal quest for this character. Just, just seems like we... Because we know that we're going to go in and be really aggressive. We know that we're going to burn a card and basically exhaust. Like, we just know that that's what's going to happen with this character. Like, every scenario that comes down to the end, it's going to be the Saw that exhausts because they have to jump in and they have to do their, like, big turn. Like, that's what they do. One less shield on any round with the Sun Keeper would have been ruinous. Yeah, exactly. Playing that, what was it, Righteous Strength that we played? Oh, man, that was huge. Just to get that one extra strength, that one round, and we only took one damage from, what was it, like five attacks? Yikes. Do I have a guide for Corruptive Cove? No, I don't actually have a guide for any particular scenarios, apart from, I guess, the uh, the first two. Um, I have a scenario, I have a guide for Black Barrow, but I don't actually have a guide for any particular ones. The problem is with with guides for particular scenarios is there is some scenarios where you can kind of give a guide but a lot of them are going to come down to your party because oftentimes your party really um shapes the way that you need to approach a scenario you know it's if you've got like a big aoe that can target a load of stuff then you're going to be a lot more aggressive than if you're sat there like with single target and you need to be invisible and hide and stuff like that right that the, there is a lot of mechanics at play i think it's very hard to give 
an all-purpose guide to one particular scenario because it's just it really does depend on who you've got and unfortunately there are some scenarios that some parties just will not be able to do or they would find it very difficult right so find it very difficult on like plus difficulty maybe if you dropped it down to easy you'd be able to do it but i, I don't know about playing it on like normal or above normal some some will struggle a lot like oozing grove for example like imagine playing circles in oozing grove it's like this is like just a nightmare oh why and that's just how it is right let's do our level ups level seven master physician for your next six heal abilities remove all negative conditions on the heal targets so this is like the the thing that we we hoped our level one card would do um that's still not that great though add plus four heal to all your heal action is a huge amount of heal like it's overkill really this is a big overkill card in my opinion for healing it really is way too much so surgeon satchel loot one heal two effect all just allies quite nice actually because it's a heal like on everything and you can move and then heal also though this is really what makes this card good the one thing that really annoys me about med packs up to this point is that you kind of have to take a whole turn off to give characters med packs you know in order for you to be able to give that med pack you kind of have to position yourself smartly you maybe don't get to do too much as you've probably noticed i've given out like a grand total of two med packs this entire time because it's just really difficult to do so you just you want to be moving all the time you want to be moving towards a door you want to be getting towards a character to do it this solves all of those issues gives you a good action that you're happy to play anytime great initiative and gives you that med pack as a bit of upside so this is like by far like the most usable med pack card in my opinion um so and it it doesn't it doesn't uh it doesn't like do any harm that the top as well is like not bad like in terms of just getting a loot do a little bit of healing especially if your people are poisoned and stuff it's not bad it's in larger parties the top is is okay the, but the bottom is really where I, what i really love about this card so it's a pretty easy choice for me i always find that the, the really all-in healing cards on sawbones are just way too much like why would i want to heal for like 15 20 every single round like it's just it's just like it's just too much you don't need it right the question is though what do we get rid of now really it probably should be precaution because it is the one card that we that we play and it's only one difference in initiative which is nothing really um everything else kind of has a place like i said before everything really kind of does something the the only other card i guess we could argue to get rid of is curative mixture because it really doesn't do too much apart from it's sometimes a move three or 19 initiative and sometimes there's a little bit of a heal for us but i think probably getting rid of precaution is is, is pretty good here Precaution is what you always drop for satchel. Yeah, I, I think that that's fair. Because you don't you don't really want too many cards doing med packs. And uh, this is basically just a strict upgrade over this card on the bottom. And the top doesn't do a lot. Like, it occasionally gets played. Very rarely. But it's very sort of inconsequential. Like, it, is, it very rarely affects the game. Whereas this this bottom here will. And this, this top will too. Uh, uh, points. So, yeah. I think it's a... Uh, a nice pretty straightforward swap kind of upgrade really um this might answer your question According to alexa Wikipedia. stop wasn't speaking to her uh, thank you so much for the follow uh hauling i really appreciate it welcome in hope you're doing well welcome to the quest good to have you here with us so now is the question what do i actually um what do i actually pick up here it's probably the plus twos. But also that does stop me from hitting this. Rolling stun's okay, but if you consider that we'll be playing it with hammer, it's kind of a bit meh. I think I'll go for the rolling twos. Helps us do more damage. Oh, we get an extra poke too. More rolling twos. I think that's pretty good all right sunny d we have supportive chart love this card love 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 this card i always use this joe like in combo kind of builds but this 
obviously this now in combination with being able to target everything could start to get a little bit scary for the enemies like so being able to jump in do um a big attack target loads of things supportive chance up there is some really nice combo potential there and uh again in combination with this right there's like some kind of like wombo combo going on here unfortunately we won't be able to do it like because in a way like this wants to go this wants to go after we've played on the saw bones and this wants to go before we've played on the saw bones so it doesn't quite work out exactly as you want but could for example allow um someone like the mind thief to get some extra attacks in or, or could work so i do really like supportive chant the bottom is um not really very usable i would say i don't think i've ever really used the bomb of this maybe in like a summons build or something 11 initiative too is, is very low for this character illuminate the targets not a bad card to be honest it's a pretty it's a pretty decent attack attack five and then strengthen all of your adjacent allies that's really nice 91 initiative makes this really bad though like you really want to do it like often you want to kind of know going into a round that this is you've got strengthen for this round and I, I really dislike it i just don't like kind of giving this strengthen to allies for them to use on their next turn because it just it's just a little bit hard to sequence up or like you're kind of you you don't end up focusing on it very well so you forget about it and that's that's a bit of a problem i think the initiative really ruins this card if this was lower initiative even if it wasn't something stupid like if it was somewhere in the 30s i think this would be a lot more playable but because it's 91 it becomes quite hard i think to to play it um this is quite good though it's a free attack six on the bottom really good upgrade over this right really really good upgrade illuminate target might be a card that we end up considering later but i think for now supportive chant is just really really good for what we're trying to do with this team it's not going to play very nicely though it's actually not going to play very nicely with eclipse when eclipse comes in so that is maybe worth considering there that we might end up dropping it at that point There we go. That's good. All right. So, do we need to buy anything? We've got a lot of gold. Have we opened up any more slots? No? Is there any... I don't think there's anything in the merchant that we particularly really want right now, is there? I'm really happy with my, um, my team right now. The only thing I would suggest is maybe getting a, a miner here, but I don't think it's really that necessary. All right, that looks pretty good. How about for you? You're fully fully geared now. Let's just make sure we go... Uh, let's go to... Yeah, let's do enhancements first as well. Because we were looking at an enhancement here, weren't we? So it might be a good idea to get something like an extra move on the bottom of here. That's 50. This is a really desirable one. 60. Because that basically just turns it back into a move too. <laughs> Costs 60 gold, but puts it back into a move too. Jump is something that's also worth considering can be a bit hard to find a good one to do it on though i guess maybe you could put it on hammer blow but you don't really want to be using the bottom of that card um yeah if we hadn't put sun on the bottom of tactical order you might consider that really annoys me that practical plans isn't, isn't upgradable but i mean it is a level two card that's an attack five move five it's very strong so, so it's kind of understandable yeah, it's either Scales of Justice or um, Righteous Strength. Considering that there's only 10 gold difference, I think I'm going to go in here. I think that's good. Helps that character out a little bit. We can start to look to upgrade this, but that's 85. Maybe we just hoard gold for a little bit. Maybe get one more broken enhancement. And then we, then we probably retire. Could also just stick wound on frigid apparition could be a nice way to just keep getting extra wounds on actually that's quite nice for 45 let's get that now we've got like wound here and wounds here and with the stun as well that's technically two negative conditions for euthanize so we can also just open ourselves up to maybe more euthanize opportunities later on down the line too um temple hey yori How's it going? Long time no see. 
Um, I think I'm going to save some gold here. We're still working towards stuff, so we'll, we'll just save that. All right, city encounter to end the day. Be nice to me, chat. Though I've played really hard today. All right, I feel very proud of myself. So be nice. <laughs> Which option are we going to go for? One or two? Start the poll. Right, vote. You decide to unwind at the sleeping lion, but just as you're starting to relax, a bear of a man crashes into your table, scattering your drinks across the floor. Towering over him is a massive inox. What did you say about my horns? The inox shouts. The man stands up and brushes shards of glass from his tunic. I said the sight of them makes me want to vomit. The inox roars and charges headlong into the man, crashing through more tables in the process. At this, the entire tavern erupts into violence. After all, when a man is deep into his drink, the last thing you want to do is knock that drink over. To be option one, join the fray. These insults will not go unanswered. Or option two, do your best to stop the fighting. This is a respectable establishment. Crashing through more tables in Oxy's trample. Basically, yeah. Basically. Option two. Stop the fighting. Very noble of you. After restraining the en enraged Inox and offering to replace the drinks of a few of the more belligerent patrons, you calm the place down a bit. Some of the non-human patrons are understandably on edge, but the proprietor thanks you for your efforts and reimburses you for the drinks. Plus one rep. Awesome. Okay then, so that brings us to the end of this week's episode. And what an episode it was. I cannot believe the streak of bad luck I was having at the end of that Sanctuary of Gloom run. I mean, that's unprecedented. I called it out on stream at the time. I don't think I've ever had such a bad run. And it meant we had to go right down to the last. And we had to even kind of cheese the game a little bit. But to be honest, I wanted to finish that scenario. I felt like the RNG was really, really just hosing us so much towards the end. So I'm glad that we did. And in fact, at that point in time when we had that door and I felt like maybe if we drew that curse against that door and we didn't destroy that door that round, that was going to actually cause us an issue. And I was right. If we didn't do that and even at that point in time decide to just change the way we play slightly so we don't, we do actually get to destroy the door, I don't think we would have won. So really, really tough scenario. So glad to see the back of it, but one we really had to go into the tank and work and work. And we even had to cheese it a little bit with some sort of undoing mechanics at the end there. But I mean, come on, the game gave me some pretty horrendous RNGs. And we also beat Abandoned Sewers, which I'm really, really happy about. That's another really difficult scenario. One that's deceptively hard. Doesn't look like it might be too hard at all, but that difficult terrain with all the water does make movement very awkward in this scenario for certain characters and, and in certain kind of compositions. And then in that final room, if those oozes go off and split a lot, which in this playthrough they did, I honestly thought that that might be the end of us. I did think at one point, Wow, I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this one out of the bag. But we did actually manage to do it. Every bit of damage counted. The sun absolutely came through like a champ there with that shield up. So it didn't take any damage. Didn't have to burn extra cards. Yeah, it was a really, really satisfying end to that one. We really had to go into the tank and work it. Because I found that scenario hard times when the uses haven't even split that much. It's still been pretty hard because it's quite a long scenario. It's only three hexes or three different sort of rooms. But actually, because of that terrain and just the splitting that can happen and just the clogging up of the scenario that can happen, it kind of slows you down quite a lot. And yeah, I was really, 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 really happy with that. So great to get another hard scenario done and in the books. Okay, then that pretty much wraps up this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do consider tossing it a like and subscribing. It helps me so, so much on YouTube and I really, really appreciate it. Also come over to twitch.tv slash mandatory quests where I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday. Mondays is when the Deadly series is live. So if you would like to catch an episode of this series live, then come over to the Twitch stream on a Monday. All right, then again, thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye. I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Scout oh, wins. That's, that's the best name from Scout That's the best so, name from. Uh, uh, Isaac, at this point, can we uh, get your approval to add an additional attack modifier deck uh -huh. for allies in the digital version?